is tape number one to the videotape deposition of Herman Payne in the matter of Herman Payne versus Downtown Center Business Improvement District Management Corporation being heard before the Superior Court of the State of California, County of Los Angeles, case number B, C, six, six, one, nine, four, five. This deposition is being held at 350 South Grand Avenue, Suite 2300, Los Angeles, California, 90071, on July 11, 2017, at 10, 10 a.m. My name is Tricia Korolek and I'm the videographer. The court reporter is Megan Grossman Sinclair. Counsel, will you please introduce yourselves and affiliations and the witness will be sworn. Dan Shamas for defendant. Craig Burns for the plaintiff. Okay, please raise your right hand. You do solemnly state that the evidence you're about to give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Dan Shamas, and I'm the attorney for defendant, your, your employer, and uh, the defendant is the Downtown Center Business Improvement District Management Corporation. Um, and, um, and, and you refer to that as um, DC bid? Correct. Um, so today, I'll be taking your deposition, and, and, and have you ever had your deposition taken before? No, I have not. Okay, so a deposition is, uh, most important thing is the oath you just took is an oath to tell the truth under the penalty of perjury. So even though we're in the informal setting of a conference room, your testimony will have the same force and effect as if you were in the court of law. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Um, Make so, sure to speak up, Mr. Payne. Yeah, it's important to speak up and also to give verbal answers to all my questions. So if I ask you a question um, that's yes or no, rather than say uh-huh or nah -uh, or nod your head or shake your head, even though I'm here and I'll see it and I'll know it, what you mean, on the paper transcript that's printed, that's typed up ap after this deposition, it will be um, difficult or impossible to understand what you meant. So please do your best to give audible answers. Do you understand? Yes. Uh, equally important is that even though in conversation we can, people tend to talk over each other um, during conversation because I'll, I'll know, because uh, you may know what, what I'm asking before I'm done, done with my question, and, um, and, uh, and, and I may start my next question before you are finished your answer because I know what, you're, what you said as well, so people tend to talk over each other. In this setting, it's critical that we wait for each other to finish speaking before we start because the court reporter can't take down two people talking at the same time. So I'll do my best to let you finish your answer before I ask my next question and please do your best to wait for me to fully finish my question before you start your answer. Do you understand? Yes. I don't think you'll have a problem talking too fast but so far, but I do. I talk fast sometimes, so try to We'll both try to do our best to speak slowly and clearly for the reporter, okay? Okay. Great. Um, also, we'll be, at, we'll be talking about things that didn't happen too long ago, but sometimes things that have happened in the past are hard to remember everything that, um, everything that happened. But, um, so when I'm asking about events in the past, I'm going to try to get your best recollection of events. Do you understand what, that mean, by, by, what I mean by best recollection? Yes. So I'm entitled to know everything that you remember about an incident. So even if you don't know everything, 100% of what happened, you're not, um, you're not supposed to say, I don't remember. I'm going to get everything you remember, even if you don't remember everything. Does that make sense? I'll do my best. Yes, please. Thank you. And so, but equally important is that I don't want you to guess. So if things happen but you don't know, but I'm asking you, don't guess what happened. Just give me your best recollection. Do you understand the difference between a guess and your best recollection? Yes. Good. Um, is there anything, is there any reason why you're not able to give your um, best testimony today? 
No. Did you um, speak to anyone about your deposition before coming here today, today no. to testify? No. Did you review any documents in preparation for your testimony? No. Have you talked to anyone at all about this case besides your attorney? Other than my attorney. So no one from the city? No. Have you ever been a party to any lawsuit other than this one? No. You've never sued anyone before? No. You've never been sued before? No. Did you um, call or talk to anyone from the county about this case? No. Um, are you married? Yes. Are you a resident of downtown Los Angeles? No. Or are you a resident of what county or what um, district or city? Uh, uh, could you repeat? What city are you a resident of? Uh, Rancho Palos Verdes. When did you start working for um, DC Bid? Uh, approximately 18 years ago. Do you know the year? 1998. And when did your employment end? April 18, 2017. How did it end? I resigned my position. Why did you resign? I felt I was being badgered into performing something that I felt was illegal. Um, what did you feel? felt that you were, happy. sorry, um, what did you feel you were being badgered into performing that you thought was illegal? At the request of the city clerk special assessment office, I was requested to generate new assessment data for the upcoming ballot process which determines the weight of their ballots. And Carol Schott, um, when she discovered this, was became finally against um, me submitting this updated uh, requested information to the city clerk. Have you completed your answer? Yes. OK, but I asked you what you felt that you were being what was illegal about what you you felt you were being badgered to do? Objection. Argumentative mischaracterizes testimony. That's not actually what you asked him, but you can answer that question now. No. The, the question, can you repeat the question, please? So, um, so the original question I asked, and I'm reading it right here, was what did you feel you were being badgered into performing that you thought was illegal? And he answered that. And I'm asking, so without your testimony, I want to ask him, what was the illegal act that you were being badgered into performing? He I answered was, that. You again, I don't want you to tell me what you answered. You would say objection, ask and answer is fine, but I'd like his testimony on this point, please. You, you have his testimony. Don't okay. tell me how to respond. He's already answered your question. Okay. You can answer it again. Thank you. Go ahead. You can answer. The omission of public information to the city clerk to reflect the latest assessment data for the upcoming ballot at the time. Okay, so you felt you were asked to omit public yes. information, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so... Um, and you're saying Carol, Carol's sitting next to me, is that right? Yes. And you're saying Carol, did she ask you to omit information, public information? Essentially. Essentially? Yes. What do you mean by essentially? Um, she contacted the city clerk's office. 
uh, to request to essentially say that uh, to delay the this public information that's already been made public from being added to the ballots. So you're saying she contacted the city clerk's office? Yes. All right. Can you? Um, how did she contact the city clerk's office? Um, the, during a, a conference call. Were you? Which I was present along with uh, Dennis Rader and Rick Scott of the special assessments office. Okay. So let's start from the beginning. Why don't you tell me what led to this call? Um, on the morning of April 18th, um, Carol Schatz came to my office and I mentioned to her that on Friday I received notification from the city clerk's office that two properties, parcels, have been deleted and been converting over to approximately 350 new parcels and requested the updated assessment data so that they can be included in the ballot process. So you told Carol about a communication you received from the city? Yes. And the communication was that um, new parcels were being formed, essentially? Par two parcels being deleted and 350, approximately 350 new parcels were being created. Okay, and then the city um, told you that, and did they make a request of you? They did. What was the request the city made to you? To generate the new tax assessment information for the downtown center bid for their ballots. Once you, so you received this email, and then you communicated that to Carol? Yes. On the morning of uh, April 18th? On the April, morning of April 18th. And after you communicated that to Carol, what happened? She acted like um, it was, the, the property owners were obligated to inform them and inform her why parcels were being converted from a single parcel into multiple parcels. In this case, they were being converted to condominiums. Okay, you started off by saying, you started off by answering the question, she acted like it was the property owners were obligated without, I don't know what you mean by that, how did she act like it was? Did she say something to you? Did she, what, what did she, what did she say? Objection, argumentative, compounding, confusing. You can answer. Go ahead. It was essentially one of these, what? So, she said one word in response, what? Yeah. Yes, from what I recall. Okay, so you told her what the city had asked you to do, and she said, what? Yeah. And is that it? And, and I explained to her, this is essentially um, very routine that parcels get converted from a single to multiple and vice versa throughout the course of the year with uh, business improvement districts. With the what districts, I'm sorry? Uh, okay. Business improvement okay. districts. When, when the court reporter asks you a question, she's not asking for a clarification. Okay. She wants your exact words because that's what she's taking down is everybody's exact words. So if she asks you something, try to give her the exact words you just used. Okay, so you tell Carol what the city said. She says what, and then you explain to her that it's very routine, that parcels get converted from single to multiple, and vice versa? Yes. Okay, and then what happens after you say that? Um, I was called to go with her to her office for a conference call with Miranda Pastor with the city clerk's office for further clarification. So she asked you to come to her office? Yes. For a phone call? Yes. Okay. Now, this started by um, you saying that she acted like it was the property owner's obligation to, um, let me just 
just pull it up exactly. Properties op property owner's obligation to inform um, them why the parcels were being converted. Um, and from what you've said so far, I don't quite see that yet. Do you have any other basis for your belief that she was acting like that? Objection, argumentative. You can answer. Uh, she was not happy that the, the property owners were being divided. And yet for something that was very routine, I do not see why it was such a something that requires so much clarification on her part. And you based it on her saying what, or ex what else besides her saying what led you to believe that? Um, I, I don't remember that. You don't remember what caused you to form that belief? Um, I knew she was not happy with the property owners dividing up their parcels. Okay. Do you have any reason other than what you said to, to support that belief? No. Okay. So she summons you for a conference call, and then um, and then what happens? Does she does she dial the number? She dialed the number and um, we're discussing the matter with Miranda Pastor, which is uh, in charge of the city clerk's special assessments office. Um, she and Miranda Pastor in turn called in Dennis Rader and Rick Scott to assist in answering the questions as to why these parcels were being divided. So if you can just give me your best recollection of what um, of what Carol said to the to the people on the phone after she made the place the call. She was trying to persuade Miranda Pastor into having us delay submitting this information to the city clerk and continue using the old data on the ballots. Okay, you just started by saying she was not happy, she was um, trying to persuade, um, and I remember what I said in the beginning, I don't want you to, to me, guessing includes telling what people were thinking. So what, you what's could, your question, Mr. Jones? I'm going to finish my question. I don't want you to object or interrupt me. Okay, after I finish my question, you can make if, an objection. If you then, actually ask a question, then I won't have to say anything. But I, I, the witness does not need to be lectured. He answered your question. I, what's your next question? I'm going to continue asking the way I want to ask. You can ask objections. This is my deposition, and I will ask questions the way I want to ask. What's your question, Mr. Jones? I'm going to get to it, but I'm not going to do it in response to you. I won't do it on my pace and the way I want to ask it, okay? So my question is, and this is part of this is an admonishment that began before, which is that I'm asking for things that you said, heard, or, or, or thought. So my question, again, was what did Carol say? Not, not, what, well, not what, what she was thinking. What did she say to the people on the phone? Objection argumentative. You can answer. So go ahead. What did Carol say? You want hit her words as well as he can remember them. Yes. You can answer. She was asking Miranda Pastor if it was permissible to continue using the existing ballot information versus the information for the new parcels that along with the data that has already been made public. So she asks, can we, can we still use the old information? Is that kind of what you said? Yes. And, and how did Miranda respond by bringing in Dennis and Rick? Uh, Dennis and Rick was already in the office, on okay. the call. And what did they say? They took a while to debate on it. You completed your answer? Yes. So um, when you say they debated, do they amongst themselves? Amongst themselves. And did they do it in a way that you could hear what they were saying, or did they kind of put it on mute, or did they? It, it, was, it was whispered. Whispered enough so you could discern what they were saying? Uh, no. Okay, so how do you know they were debating? Because uh, Miranda had to discuss the matter with her people. 
but maybe they were all agreeing, I mean, as opposed to debating. What, why do you conclude they were debating rather than uh, they were all agreeing with each other? Objection argumentative. You can answer. Uh, could you repeat the question? Yeah, what led you to believe they were debating rather than agreeing with each other? Because I, the request came from Dennis Rader, it, which it was something that I receive on a regular basis for the latest information for ballots or petitions throughout the cycle of a renewal. Have you completed your answer? Yes. So I asked why you thought they were debating, and you said because Dennis originally asked for the information. Is that correct? Yes. So why does that lead you to believe that they were debating whether or not that the old information could be used? Because I know Dennis always requests the latest information be used on petitions or ballots that is made available to us. Is there any other basis for your belief that they were debating on whether or not to use the old parcel information on the ballot? Yes, because it would be highly irregular to use information that was um, public and they were already made aware of and notified us on. Any other reason to believe that at that moment on the phone that they were debating amongst themselves about whether or not to use the old parcel information? I do not know. Okay, so after they were discussing amongst themselves, um, in answer to Carol's question, did they come back on and say something um, that you could hear? Um, Miranda reluctantly uh, mentioned said, um, "Yes, they can go ahead and process the old data on the ballot." Did you say reluctantly? Was that the word you used? That, that was the her verbal inclinations when she talked on the phone. Okay. Um, okay. So Miranda said. And you, your words were reluctantly, right? Yeah. Reluctantly, yes. Yes. That um, that they that they that they could could use the old information. Yes. Um, do you remember the best of your ability or exact words? No. But it was words to the effect of you can use the old parcel information. Yes. 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 Sounds like a quick conversation. Was it a quick conversation? Objection argumentative. You can answer. It was approximately a 15 to 20 minute conversation. Okay, 15 to 20 minutes. And can you tell me um, how much of the call happened before they were discussing amongst themselves and how much of the call happened after they were discussing amongst themselves? Um, it's about 10 minutes before. Carol describing to Miranda what happened, what, why are asking why these two parcels were being deleted and divided. And the other half um, with their outcome after their discussion on their end. And was there, is there any more, is there anything more specifically you can remember about that call, about what was being said on either side of that? Um, of that discussion. We'll start with the first part. Do you remember anything more than what you just said about Carol's introduction or discussion of the issue or the problem she was calling about? Uh, no. Do you remember anything more about um, the, the latter half of the call, that being their um, permission to use the old parcel information? It, no, that, that, that is all I remember. Okay. Um, and would you agree, though, that 
at the, by the end of the call, the city had given permission for DC bid to use the old parcel information? Yes. Did you speak at all during the call? I attempted to, uh, and Carol put her hand in my face not to interject. Do you remember what, when you were, oh, do you remember what you were trying to say? I was trying to um, reinstate that this is a routine process and parcels get de deleted and divided into multiples throughout the course of a renewal and we have done this in our previous renewals as well. That's what you were trying to say? Yes. Do you remember when you were trying to say that? What point in the call? About five minutes into the call when um, as um, Carol um, was trying to explain the situation to Miranda. And present the issue? Yes. Um, and did you actually start to say something and Carol immediately? Yes. Shut you down, for lack of a better word? Yes. And after that attempt to speak, did you try to attempt to speak again? I just sat quietly. So, um, and then, then you guys hung up? Yes. What happened immediately after hanging up? Carol was pretty happy with outcome from the city clerk and uh, told me not to pursue it further. Told you not to pursue it further? Yes. Did she use words to that effect? Uh, not exactly. Uh, Carol was mentioned that the city has blessed this process, and, and that was the end of it. Do you feel that um, that Carol was um, dishonest with the city during the phone conversation? No. Feel that she was gave them inaccurate information during the phone conversation. No. Do you feel that she withheld information during the phone conversation? No. Do you feel that the city had all the information during the phone conversation? Yes. When after you hung up, did you try to talk her out of it or convince her to do something else? No. You were quiet after you after the phone call ended. Yes. And then and then, did, but but she still you believe you remember she still told you not towards the effect of don't pursue this anymore. Yes. Um, do you know why? And I don't want you to speculate, but do you know why she said that to you after the phone call? No. After the phone call, did you did you want to? Um, did you want to change the parcel information? No. Why? Carol shots with my boss. She said not to pursue it. Did anything the city said on the phone um, play into your decision not to want to pursue this any further? Objection confusing. You can answer. I would not know. No, I'm just saying you for, after the phone call, you testified that you no longer wanted to um, pursue this any further. Is that correct? Objection misstates prior testimony. You can answer. Is that correct? You can answer. Your question again? I asked you previously, after the phone call, did you want to change the parcel information? And you said no. No. So, however, th this information would have to be updated at some point. 
regardless. Yeah. I understand. But my question is, is to that question and answer about whether or not you wanted to change the parcel information, uh, my question is, is any, did anything the city said on the phone um, contribute to your, to your decision not to want to change the parcel information anymore? Objection. Confusing. You can answer. I can restate it if you want. Yes, please. Okay, so originally you said, I asked you why didn't you want to change the parcel information anymore, and you said, well, because Carol's my boss. Do you remember that? Yeah. So my, that's one reason you didn't want to change the parcel information anymore, is that because Carol was your boss and told you to stop pursuing it, right? Yes. So I'm wondering if another reason that you didn't want to change the parcel information anymore had anything to do with what the city said on the phone. No, uh, I, I was going to withhold and stop the processing of the new data at the request of Carol Schatz. Okay, so whether or not the city blessed it or approved it didn't matter to you, right? No. All right. Um, and then after um, Carol um, told you not to pursue it further, what happened immediately after that? I bumped into Suzanne Hawley in the hall as she was coming into work that morning. Suzanne is in the room today? Yes. To brief her, because I informed her from the previous day on Monday that I was working on researching all the new parcel information that the city had requested. And since I report to her, I, which I felt obligated that I needed to inform her that this is why I am stopping what I was working on. So you told her, I'm no longer going to be updating the parcel information that I had previously told you I was going to update. Correct. How did she respond? Well, we were interrupted by Carol Schatz coming down the hall, basically telling me that we, I was not to be discussing this matter without her presence and to essentially get my butt in the conference room for the director's meeting. So before Suzanne had a chance to respond, Carol interrupted, so to speak? Yes. And she said, don't discuss this. Um, did you say don't discuss this without her or don't discuss this in the hall? Do not discuss this matter without her presence. Um, do not discuss this matter without her being there? Yes. And to get into the conference room? To get into the conference room for the director's meeting. The staff meeting? Uh, there was a director's meeting that morning. Okay. You said, um, I think you originally said, she said, get your butt into the, the conference room, right? Correct. Did she use those words, or is that just what you felt she was saying? That's what I felt she was saying. Do you remember her exact words, the best of your recollection? Yes. Do you remember those words exactly? What, I mean, what she said exactly? Just get into the conference room, or? Um, uh, very harsh, harshly, uh, like I need to get into the conference room for the director's meeting. And this was right in front of all the employees in the in their cubicles. She said it with a harsh tone? Yes. Yes? Yes. Did she raise her voice? Yes. And what did you, have to, what did you do after she said that? I went to get a cup of coffee and I proceeded to the conference room. For the director's meeting? For the director's meeting. And what happened at the director's meeting? When I, as soon as I walked in the door, uh, Carol, I do not remember the exact words again, um, tells me once again, uh, do not discuss this matter during the director's meeting. And uh, that is when I resigned. 
So as soon as you walked in the door, Carol, was it privately said to you or announced no. it? This was in front of uh, uh, all the directors. But did she say it in a way that was everyone could hear? Or Everybody did she... could have heard, could hear it. Yes. Okay, and she said to you, again, don't discuss this anymore? Yes. Had you planned on discussing it? No. Because you said before that you were... Um, you weren't going to pursue the matter any further, right? Which is correct, which is why I was not going to be discussing it further. Right. And when you told Suzanne, you were just updating her more than... Yes, otherwise it. she would be wondering why I wasn't working on what I told her the previous day. Right. So you were, again, giving her an update more than pursuing it yes. further, right? Yes. Yes. Mr. Chumps, please make sure your client doesn't comment during the testimony. All right. So, um, after, um, so look, when did you decide to resign? At the moment when I walked in the door, after Carol telling me that, that I that was not to discuss this any further once again, which was already understood in the hallway. But if, um, if she hadn't said that to you in the conference room, would you have resigned? No. Objection. Calls her hypothetical. S um, so you resigned because she told you a second time not to discuss it? Yes. So I'm a little bit confused. Um, and. I want you to help clarify this for me. Originally you said words to the effect of, I resigned because you were being badgered into doing something illegal. Um, and, um, and now we're talking about her, Carol, admonishing you again not to um, bring something up that she had told you before not to bring something up. and. I'm not sure which is the reason you resigned. Objection argumentative. Can you please clarify again whether it was her comment not to bring it up again that, that motivated you to resign? Or was it the original omission of public information that led you to resign? It's still uh, the omission of public information that should have been included on the ballots. As the you reason why. The question. Okay, but then why is it? But then why would you have stayed aboard if she hadn't told you not to mention it again in the, in the meeting? Objection. Calls for hypothetical. You can answer. Do you understand the question? Could you repeat that? Sure. Um, the question was, why, why would you have stayed on board if she hadn't told you not to mention it again in the meeting? Because I would be, would be I would believe the city clerk would have uh, made further requests for this updated information. And then you could have um, made it right at some later point? Yes, my research on the new parcels was nearly complete as of Monday morning. So if they had request, the city had requested it again, you could have provided the information? Yes. And, um, and therefore not omitted the, public, the information that, that Carol was trying to omit. Is that correct? Yes. I'm sorry, could I get the last question and answer back, please? Question, and therefore not omitted the public, the information that Carol was trying to omit. Is that correct? Answer yes. Thank you. 
but because she had told you for a second time not to um, not to uh, discuss this matter, um, you didn't want to wait for that to happen, correct? I I was just going to wait because um, I'm sure I was very sure the city clerk will be requesting that additional information within the next few weeks. Right, but the reason you didn't wait is because of Carol's comment in the staff meeting, correct? It was essentially the constant badgering to remain silent on the matter. Right, the constant badgering that we discussed already, right? Yes. And because of that constant badgering, you decided not to wait for the city clerk to request the information again and for you to make things right, correct? No, that, that was not what I said. What did you say? The, 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 I said this uh, within a few weeks, the city most likely would be requesting that updated information. And you would have waited for that, the city to request it had Carol not badgered you, correct? Yes. Yeah. Can we take a short break? Yeah. Thank you. This marks the end of meeting number one. The time is 10.51 a.m. for off the record. This marks the beginning of meeting number two. The time is 11.01 a.m. for on the record. Is it true that, that that ballots were being prepared to be distributed to parcel owners? Yes. At that time? Yes. As of April 18? Yes. The city clerk was holding off on the portion that I was working on. And they were prepared to withhold it till the new data was available for those ballots. Um, can you just describe the ballot process and how that um, how that coincides with your job? Um, every renewal, the I determine the square footage from the assessor's website as well as a service called DataQuick to locate the building square footages or lot square footages depending on the property to generate the assessment dollars for that for the down business improvement district's as portion of the assessment and as provided to the city clerk's office when um, how often is a renewal uh, before this renewal, it was every five years. And now? Uh, this latest one is for a 10-year term. So the renewal that that was up in 2017 was after a five-year term? Yes. And so um, every, and, and, and tell me what happens at a renewal? Uh, it starts with a petition process. And we we successfully completed. Um, um, we the city clerk mails out the petitions along with the information pertaining to their parcels for them to vote on whether the bid should be renewed. And after the successfully passing the petition process, and the city clerk pr provides their blessing, uh, and the county. The uh, city council provides their blessing. Um, 
it moves on to the ballot phase, which at the time was what we were working on. And uh, how do you, how does your job coincide with the ballot phase? I provide the calculated assessment information to the city clerk's office for them to generate the ballot ballots. Do you provide them with a database? Uh, yes. And that database has the information the city needs to to um, finalize the ballots. Yes. Had you by as of April 18, had you provided the database to the city? The previous one that was used for the assessment process. At the petition. For the petition process. When was that? When did you provide the database for the petition process? About three, four months prior. So beginning of the year. Yeah. Beginning of 2017. Yes? Yes. And throughout that process, a uh, number of changes to that data was made as properties changed, as in the case where it was occurring during most recently. How do you provide the database to the city? Uh, via email. And at some point, the beginning of 2017, you emailed the city with the database that you were maintaining? Yes. It was emailed to our consultant, um, Main Street Partners, and they in turn emailed the final after their review to the city clerk. How does your partner, what was the partner's name again? Uh, Main Street Group. Main Street Group? Yeah. That was Steve Gibson. And what's their role? How do, what, how, what do they do with the database that you provide them? Um, they, they act as a consultant and they assist us with the processing of the management plan as well as re uh, reviewing our data. Okay, so at some point in the early part of 2017, you sent the database to this consulting partner, correct? Yes. And then they sent that directly to the city? Yes. Did they make any changes to the database as far as um, you knew? Between that time, the data goes back and forth uh, between them and myself and the city clerk as we make changes. Is yes. this kind of a, a three-way changing yes. of the database? Yes. The three of you, are you all in the same emails? Uh, well, we know all our emails. And so what I mean is, is like, is it a discussion between the three parties on email about issues or questions and changes to the database? Uh, yes, as well as phone calls. With three parties on the phone again? Uh, no. Sometimes? Sometimes. Not always? Not always. And eventually, do all three of you have to say, okay, this is the final version? Um, no, as long as the data is the same amongst the three sets no, I mean, I'm just describing, you're describing a process where there are three parties, the city, your consulting partner, and, and yourself, and the DC bid, are um, finalizing the database. Is that correct? Yes, during the initial process. Right, for the petition. Yes. And um, how, does, how is it determined, or who determines when the database is in a final form ready for the petition? The city clerk will make the final call on that after she or the city clerk has done this asking for more information from you or your partner, correct? Yes. And they will turn at times notify us that changes need to be made. But at some point in 2017, the beginning of 2017, the database was finalized, correct? For the petition phase. And even during that time, changes were still being made. To parcel information, right? Yes. But at some point, they called it as final, right? For the petition phase, For yes. the petition. And at that point, um, the petitions went out to each yes. property owner, correct? Yes. And, um, and did that petition contain information to each property owner about their accessible um, square footage? Yes. And then they, and then what do they? What does the property owner do upon receiving the petition? Um, they decide if they want to check the box for yes to renew the bid, and mail the ballots back. 
Yeah, I, or, or email about it. You're using two terms interchangeably. I, maybe. Are you talking about petitions or ballots at um, this point? Um, I think I'm, I'm talking about petitions. Okay. You, you understand we're talking about the petition, not the ballot phase. Petition, yes. Okay. So the petition has its own vote. The ballot's a vote and the petition's a vote as well? Yes. So the petition phase, um, the, the property owner checks a box about, yes, I want the DC bid to continue? Yes, to move, proceed to the ballot phase. And do they mail it back, the petition? Um, it comes in by mail. They occasionally come in by scan emails. Do you know if there's a deadline for when the petition has to go out by? Uh, there was. I do not recall the exact date. But do you know approximately when it is, like, like a month or a, or, a, or a season of when the petition has to go out by? If I, approximately around, I think it was around April. Um, it was all stated in the package with the, with the petitions. No, I don't, I don't mean being mailed back. I mean being mailed out oh. to the property owners. Uh, yes. Do you know if there was a deadline by when the city had to mail the petition out to the property owners? There was. And is that, you said you thought April was the time, or was that when the petition had to be returned by? That's when, I felt, when it was going out. It, it all, there, there was a, they had a timeline that they provided us. Okay, and do you know if that timeline or that deadline for the petition going out, do you know if that was flexible, or was that a hard deadline that couldn't be moved? It was somewhat flexible. And do you, what, why, what do you base that on? Do you base that on, on what? Uh, the, how fast that the delivery of the petitions to the post office it, it, it took a few days to get all the truckloads to the post office no what I mean is is like could they wait until the summer to send out the petition no well so but what when is the that you know if there's a deadline that's not movable on the petition going out no I do not Okay, so there could be or there may not be. You just don't know, correct? Yes? Yes. Okay, then after the petitions are returned, is there, is there a certain number of, of approvals that you have to see to move to the ballot phase? Yes. And uh, do you know what that is, what that they, standard is? They need to break the 50% mark of the weighted um, percentage of each ballot received. Okay, and then in this case, did that happen? Yes. In 2017? Yes. And at that point, um, then does it move to the ballot phase? Uh, yes, after the city council convenes. And uh, I believe they make a vote on it. On whether or not to move to the ballot phase? Yes. Okay, and then, um, and then if nothing changes in the property... Um, in the parcels is the exact same information used that um, on the parcel information in the finalized database um, in the ballot phase, the same information used? No. There are ownership changes as well as parcel changes that get reflected on the ballot portion. Right, but my question was, if nothing changes ownership-wise or improvement-wise or parcel-wise, would the database that you had finalized in the earlier part of the year be used again in the ballot phase? Yes. But you're saying that often keep things keep changing, so the database needs to keep being updated, correct? Yes. Do you use your consulting partner um, in, while you're updating the database after the petition phase? Yes, at times they are notifying me of changes as well. If um, if there is no um, if there is no ownership or parcel change at all after the petition is approved, do you have any role in the ballot phase? Other than assisting the city clerk and the consultant and keeping the data as up to date as possible. 
but up to date to reflect changes, correct? Yes. So if there are no changes, is your role in the ballot phase done? It would be done, yes. Okay, so your only role is if things occur like what happened with Dennis Rader emailing you and saying parcels have changed, then you spring into action, right? Yes. But you have no other role in the ballot phase, correct? No. That's what I said is correct? Yes. Is there, um, is there a, a deadline for the ballot to go out? I do not know. There is a time window that they uh, do this process. Okay, let, let's, let's go back to the petition process for a minute. I want to ask you a question about that again. Do you know if um, petitions all go out at the same time or are some held back, or can they go out over the course of a certain number of days or weeks, or do you know at all? They, from the designated start date, we will attempt to get them out as fast as possible. Yeah, but is it a rolling basis that they go out? Like they go out as they're done, or do they all go out on the same day together? Um, this particular case, uh, we had, uh, took approximately three days to get all the truckloads to the post office. Of the petitions? For the petitions. Okay, was that just because of the volume or was that just because, because you were of the still... Volume. Wait a minute, wait, wait for the full question, please. So my question was, was that because of the, um, was that because of the volume of the petitions or because they were still being completed over the course of the three days? It was because of the volume. So they were all done when the first one went out, correct? Yes. So same question as the ballots. Do you know if the ballots are all mailed out at the same time? or are they, or staggered because of volume, or are they mailed out as they're completed? I do not know other than the portion that was being withhold because of the changes requested by the city clerk. Okay, so in this the, case. The ballot process is mailed out by the city clerk's office. Okay, so in this case, um, after the petition was approved, um, did you have any role in the ballot process before you got the information from the city with regards to these two parcels in particular? No. So after the petition was approved, you had no involvement at all until that moment? Other than occasional updates on ownerships from the, either the city clerk. Uh, the city clerk requested that I keep them updated of any um, ownership changes that I may have come across and vice versa. So in 2017, after the petition was approved, did you make periodic adjustments to ownership issues with parcels? Yes. Um, were they major or minor in your eyes? Uh, they were minor, mainly ownership name changes. Things that would be quick. Yes. In this particular case, the Dennis communicate or the city's communication to you about these parcel um, changes that was right before your resignation were those changes major or minor? They were major. And this was the first major change that you had confronted since the petition was approved, correct? Yes. Do you know the phase that the um, that the that the ballots were in in terms of at that moment, April? Do you know the date when you got that communication from the city? A Friday, April fourteenth. Do you know the state of the ballots um, process as of April fourteenth? If I recall, Dennis mentioned on the phone call that I had with them on Friday. Um, that they were preparing to mail out on Monday morning. Monday the 18th? The 18th. They were prepared no. to mail? Monday to be the 17th? 17th. So you resigned on a Tuesday? Yes. The 18th? Yes? Yes. So Dennis had mentioned on a phone call on the 14th that they were preparing to mail out the ballots on the, the Monday yes. after, correct? Yes. I don't remember 
you discussing or describing a phone call with, with Dennis on the on the 14th? Maybe that's just I don't remember. But can you describe it again? Did you did you call Dennis or did he call you? Objection, argumentative, and compound. You can answer. It's toward the end of the day on Friday when I received the email from Dennis, and I I called him back, as asking him how quickly that he would need this data. And he informed me as soon as possible because they are holding off on sending the, 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 the ballots for those two properties until I was able to process the, the data for them. So they were holding up all the ballots because of these two parcels, correct? Uh, yeah. For, they did send some out on Monday. But for these two parcels, they're waiting for the the new parcels to be included for the, to be sent out as soon as I was able to provide them with the information. Okay, just to be clear though, on the Friday when you spoke to Dennis, he had told you that um, they were going to mail all the ballots on Monday? They were going to do the ballots, on, mail out the ballots on Monday, except for the ones they were wanting for these new parcels, which um, hoping to get out to him on that Tuesday. So did Dennis discuss with you on the Friday a plan that they would mail out all the ballots except for those two in dispute or at issue on Monday and then after you provided the information mail out the last ballots on the Tuesday? Yes. That was the plan on Friday that he was hoping to be able to meet, yes. correct? Yes? Yes. Did you respond with anything? How did you respond? I informed him I will do my best. And that was the end of the conversation? That was the end of the conversation. Was that the extent of the conversation as yes. far as you can remember right now? Yes. Um, how feasible was it for you to uh, finish your analysis by the April 18th, the Tuesday? Um, very. Uh, I was nearly complete. I was going to uh, spend some time at the county assessor's office on their computer terminals to uh, do a second verification on the data that I was able to research off the websites from the city assessor's office. The county assessor's office, correct. So you had planned to go to the county assessor's office? To do a, a second verification. So were you done pending that second verification? Uh, well, could, can you repeat? Yeah, were you done with your analysis pending the second verification? Yes. As of the Tuesday? The Tuesday morning. And that's when the, the phone call happened, correct? Yes. So as of the phone call that you had with Carol and, um, and Dennis on Tuesday morning, your testimony is, is that, um, is that all the ballots except the ones at issue were already mailed out? As far as I know since um, we were not involved in the mailing process. But that is what you had learned that their yes. plan was. You learned that on Friday, correct? Yes. You testified originally that you believe that um, omitting the information would be illegal. Is that your testimony? Yes. Um, what is your um, basis for that belief, that you believe it would be illegal? I believe the property owners 
um, have a right to know how much they would be paying on the tax assessments on the properties that they would be voting on this ballot. Any other reasons you believe that this omission of information would be illegal? Not that I'm aware of. So you're in your state of mind on April 18th, your concern was that omitting this information would deprive property owners of, the, of information before they voted on how much they would pay because mm -hmm. of the, if they approved the DC bid? Yes. What if, um, what if you had learned of a, um, of a new parcel division or information, but it was the day after all the ballots had gone out? Do you know what, what would be the procedure for that, if any? Objection. We have calls for hypothetical. You can, lack of foundation. You can answer it. It would be at the discretion of the city clerk's request. It would be what? The, the city clerk would be providing me the request for that information if it was needed. But request information for basically to do the same thing you had done, which is provide the new estimates for accessible square footage? Yes. But, they, but the, isn't it too late at that point? Doesn't the property owner already have the ballot with the wrong information on it? There have been occasions where the city clerk will notify the owner that there have been changes. Uh, presented to them and regenerate. So city clerk may regenerate the ballot? Yes. In their discretion? Yes. Yes? Yes. In its discretion, if there are changes that make the information on the ballot no longer accurate. Is that true? Yes. You said it's happened before in your experience? Uh, matter of fact, uh, yes, um, such as ownership changes. After the initial mailing of the ballots, uh, the city clerk may receive the return ballots as undeliverable, and they will in turn notify me if I had any updated information on who the owner uh, knew at, or who the new owner is or what the new address may be. And that's happened before? It is very routine, yes. Routine. It has. Um, and that would be in previous renewal? Previous renewal renewals, yes. And the new ballots were, would be sent out based off the new information? Yes. Um, besides the returning, besides the mail being returned because of a bad address or bad information, is there any other instance where you can recall where ballots were regenerated um, based off new information? Yes, yes. Uh, there have been, in the past, uh, uh, requests to update the partial numbers that uh, were discovered that no longer exist. How is it discovered? Um, the, the city clerk, uh, they, uh, inter they and review this data on a regular basis. Um, they notice, may notice a partial that was deleted and is no longer in existence. Repeat the last word. Uh, uh, parcel deleted and no longer in existence. Thank you. And if the city clerk notices a change like that, then in that case they also uh, may, in their discretion, um, generate a new ballot? Uh, yes. And uh, you remember that happening before? In the past, yes. Prior renewal bids? Prior renewals. And in, the, in that situation, the city may ask for your assistance? Uh, yes. 
helps us to keep our data uh, in sync with theirs. And so in that situation, is it true that the property owner may have received a ballot initially that contained inaccurate information as to the accessible square footage or at least the amount they were, they were going to pay and then would receive an amended ballot, a new ballot at some point later based off of the new information? Yes. And then they would cast their vote on the correct ballot in that situation, correct? Yes. Could that have happened in this case? Objection calls for speculation. Lack of foundation calls for hypothetical. You can answer. You can answer. Do you want me to repeat the question? I would not know. Well, it, happened, it had happened before, correct? From my understanding, yes. From your understanding or your experience? From, from what I know, that the, was it formed from, by, by the city clerk that they did the on, city, their, on their end? The city clerk had told you in the past of situations like we just described? Yes. So had you ever been involved in such a um, um, revision of, uh, or sorry, have you, had you ever been involved in a in the issuance of a new ballot under those circumstances? Yes. The circumstances, again, being where um, a parcel is maybe divided into different parcels, correct? Yes, and we provide the initial information provided to the city clerk, and they, in turn, uh, send it out. And they sent out the new ballot? The new revised ballot, yes. And how many times has that happened to you in the past? Uh, maybe once or twice. It's going back in time. Once or twice in the past, that's happened. And in those one or two situations that you can recall, the property owner had received a ballot with inaccurate information initially, correct? Yes. And then a new ballot was issued with revised information at a later point, correct? Yes. When you were considering resigning from your position, did you think of the possibility of, of this happening again, where the city asks you for updated information so that it could reissue ballots to these two parcels in particular? Yes. And how did that just how did that thought play into your decision on whether or not to resign? It, it was due to the, my my resignation was due to the constant badgering by Kiroshas not to prof, provide this information to withhold it, and I essentially felt that I was. Doing that would be doing something illegal. Even though a new ballot could have been generated down the line. Right? Yes. Because again, your concern was, was not with an initial ballot going out with inaccurate information. Wasn't your concern with the voter casts in a ballot without the full information? Yes. Do you have any reason to believe that Carol would resist a request by the city made at some point later after the phone call for you to update the uh, database to reflect these parcel changes so that new ballots could go out? I do not know. You had no reason to believe that she would tell you to resist that, correct? I, I would not know. You answered the question. Thank you. Uh, you no. answered the question, Mr. Pink. There's nothing more to say until the next question. Uh, when you were, you were hired 
by the DC bid. Uh, what was your position when you were hired? I was hired as a, initially as a manager. Uh, was that just your title? Uh, yes. And what were your duties as a manager? Um, um, handled the IT. Um, and since I was highly proficient with that particular database that they were using um, for managing the properties, uh, I, I, I wound up with the role of overseeing the, all the properties. Um, your, um, how did your, did your position change after being hired as a manager? Um, at some point, uh, they made me into a director. Is that a promotion? Uh, yes. And did you replace somebody who was a director in your position before? No. Was it in your position? Uh, yes. In terms of your job duties, though, did your job duties change or did they stay the same? Um, essentially the same. But your title changed? Yes. And when did that title change happen? Early 2000. So shortly after you were hired, correct? A few years after you were hired. A few years after I was hired. So you've been in your current position with your current duties for more than 15 years, correct? Yes. Who did you report to when you were first hired? Uh, Randall Ely. And um, did that change at some point? Uh, it changed. Uh, probably a number of times due to the high turnover at the organization. And who did you report to on your last day of employment? Uh, Suzanne Holly. And how long had you been reporting to her at that point? Um, approximately three to four years. And was she new when she uh, came on to? Yes. What is the Los Angeles County Recorder's Office? Objection, lack of foundation, lack of personal knowledge, calls for speculation. You can answer. Do you know? No, I do not know. Okay, I'd like to mark this is Exhibit 1. So exhibit one is a printout from the webpage for the Los Angeles County Registrar, Recorder, County Clerk. And, um, and it says here that, um, that uh, under, um, under Recorder's Office, it says that the Recorder's Office is responsible for the recording of legal documents that determine ownership of property. Do you see that? Okay, yes. Um, do you have any knowledge or any from your work? Did you ever work with the recorder's office? I work with the uh, assessor's office. The assessor's office. Are you aware of a difference between the assessor's office and the recorder's office? They are in the same building. Other, other than that, do you have any information about any differences between the, the, the two offices? No. So do you know what it means to record property? Based on your job, regardless of, did, did the recording of property ever play into your job? Objection, vague and ambiguous, lack of foundation, you can answer. Other that, uh, at some point I, uh, the property 
would get recorded. But do you know when it gets recorded? Objection, vague and ambiguous. Lack of foundation. You can answer. Uh, do I do not know. Do you know what happens first? If uh, well, let, let's let's show you this exhibit. Mark this as exhibit two. Exhibit two is a printout from the website for the Los Angeles Assessors, Los Angeles County Assessor's Office, the county assessor. Um, and um, do you work with the assessor's office at all in your job? Yes, that is where I obtain my data to generate the petitions or ballots. Okay, and that and you generate that and you, you obtain that data from the assessor's office, correct? Yes. Um, and that goes to, um, did you know, sorry, let's check that. Do you know what the assessor's office does? Objection, lack of foundation. You can answer. Uh, they appraise the properties and determine their square footages. So if you look at the second paragraph or the third paragraph, starting with the word fundamentally, um, um, and the sentence, second sentence says, specifically our appraisers fairly and accurately determine the monetary value of every home, building, parcel of land, and taxable property in the county. Would you agree with that Objection. statement as to what the assessor's office does? Objection, lack of foundation, lack of personal knowledge. Calls for speculation. You can answer. I do not know. Well, you had said that they determine assessments. I think your words were um, they appraise the properties and determine their square footages, right? Yes. So do they also determine the value uh, of the property as far as you know? Same objections. Uh, for their tax purposes. For their tax purposes? Yes. For issuing property taxes? Yes. Okay. Um, do you, but the assessor's office has their own database? Same objections. For? For properties and accessible square footage, assessments. They have a database where they have parcel numbers and they have the, the assessed value. Is that correct? Objection lack, assessors. objection, lack of foundation, lack of personal knowledge, calls for speculation compound. Can you repeat your answer, please? Uh, I would, I would assume they have their own database. But I think you said you work with the uh, assessor's office, correct? That is where I look up the latest information that they have on file, on their terminals. Okay, and so whether it's a terminal file or database, there's some collection of data the assessor's office keeps with respect to parcels, correct? Yes. And you work with that during in the course of, you worked with that during the course of your job, right? Yes. Do you know if the, if the county recorder's office, not the assessor's office, the county recorder's office has the same database or a different database? Objection, lack of foundation, lack of personal knowledge. Uh, I do not know. Let, uh, let, me, let me finish the objections, please, before you start to answer the court reporter. Can't take down what we're saying. Uh, and calls for speculation, you can answer. I do not know what the rec county recorder has on their end because I use the assessor's database or data. Do you know where um, Dennis got his information regarding the parcel changes when he sent you that email about the, the parcels that, are, that were changing? I'm sorry, can I get that question back? Do you know where Dennis got his information regarding the parcel changes when he sent you that email about the parcels that were changing? You can answer. He noticed it on the county's assessor's system, which they have access to. So do you believe that Dennis received his information from the assessor's office? 
Yes. And do you believe they said that in the email? No. Did he, how did you, why do you believe he got it from the assessor's office? Because uh, they routinely compare the parcel numbers for every bid in the district in the Los Angeles against uh, their data from the county assessors. So did you assume that it was from the assessor's office because of the practice that Dennis had over the years? Uh, yes, that would be the only way that he would have known that the parcel has been deleted and changed. And when you say the only way, you're you're again making that assumption because of what? That is the source of their data. Okay, as far as you know, right? Yes. Like you're not you. Like, sorry, the um, the recorder's office may have a database that may have different information about parcels and parcel changes, and my question is is whether or not you have any information on whether or not the city, Dennis in particular, had any use or access of the county recorder's database. Objection argumentative, assumes facts not in evidence, compound and confusing. You can answer. I do not know. Have you ever had an experience when Dennis has given you updated parcel information that was subsequently rejected by the assessor? Yes, uh, due to additional changes on parcel down the line. Let's talk about when an assessor, the assessor kicks back or rejects um, information. Um, can you describe what that means? Um, approximately every June, the, the, the Business Improvement District submit a list of all their parcels and their tax amounts to the city clerk's office, which in turn s submits to the county assessors to be included onto their tax bills. And during the timing of this, um, there have been times where um, after the county assessor receives the information, additional parcel information has been changed. You said um, every June, was that, did you submit, um, did you submit a database to the city every June? Except for the renewal years where that information is already in, included as part of the renewal process. So you don't do it twice in the renewal year, you do it only once, right? Yes. So when it's a non-renewal a non year, you do it in June. Yes. Is, it, is there a specific day in June? Is it June 1? Uh, they, will, they typically send out a notice months beforehand that we need to prepare our data and have it sent in to them uh, at a target date in June. And uh, that's for the purpose of generating a property tax bill? Yes. Okay, so in, um, so in some years when you submitted the database in June, you're saying that um, the assessor would kick back or reject something? Um, after they receive the information and during their processing, um, they uh, routinely will notify us that uh, parcels have been deleted or combined after the time we submitted to them. So you're saying that sometimes what happens is that um, you submitted a database without the most update, up to date information, correct? We submitted the most up to date information at the time of submittal. But something happened that made it, um, made it inaccurate, correct? Uh, yes, the additional changes that, um, such as uh, additions or deletions. 
And at that point, what would happen? You'd have to update the database? I would uh, provide updates to reflect the partials that changed and update our database and provide the new assessments to the city clerk, which in turn would provide to the county assessor. So in that case, it doesn't sound like a rejection or a kickback because to me, a kickback or rejection makes it seem like your information was inaccurate when submitted. It sounds like they're asking for a new, new information for you to provide or to update it. Do you, do, you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Objection, argumentative. Go ahead. Do you, do, you, do you know the difference that I'm trying to get at, the distinction between rejecting it, saying, like, this is not right, versus saying, like, new, new developments have, have changed, so please update it with these new developments. So what I'm asking is, is has it ever happened that the, the city, the, the assessor's office, kicked back the database you submitted because it didn't have the most up-to-date information at the time you submitted it? Objection, argumentative, compounding, confusing. You can answer. They would ask for changes for, with the latest information that is presently available. And okay, and so that, that would happen. They, they would say things have changed since you submitted the database? Yes. So update the database? Yes. Um, and you would? Yes. Okay. Is there ever a situation where that's happened to you where you didn't have the most recent information when you submitted it? So, um, so they said, wait a minute, this isn't right. Not because of changes that had happened since you submitted it, but because of changes that happened before you submitted it. Yes. Um, at that one situation arise like that, I would I have contact Dennis Rader or Rick Scott at the city clerk's office and inform them that um, the data that the county assessor is requesting from me is not available for me to generate the latest inf available information. And so what, what, what would you do? What would happen in that situation? Um, between myself and the city clerk's office, um, we would have to do further research on the matter. As, uh, such as looking at uh, partial maps to make a determination of, of what happened because their system is not listing the latest uh, square footage information to generate an assessment on. Has it ever happened to you in your experience that, that you submitted information on a parcel and the problem wasn't that it wasn't new or updated enough. The problem was the opposite. The problem was that that the assessor's office didn't have the information that you submitted yet. Objection confusing. You can answer. I do not know. Do you understand the question? Yes, uh, whether they had information or did not have information that I had. Right. And you don't know if that's ever happened before? I do not recall. But is, do you know if it's possible for that to happen? Objection calls for speculation. I like would the foundation. You can answer. I would imagine it is possible. How Do you know how that would be possible that for the assessor's office not to have information that you had? Same objections. You can answer. Uh, they may not have received the, or the communication or um, and they may be re re reflecting on an older set of data. I, I, I don't know. Do you know how the assessor updates its data? The city clerk's office? Is that, is that true that the city clerk's um, office communicates with the assessor's office and the, based on that communication, the assessor's office um, updates its data? The city clerk or the assessor? Well, I think you testified that the assessor's 
office updates its database based off the city clerk's communications. Is that right? For the tax bill por portion of it. Okay. Well, I mean, it's the same database either way, right? They have one database, whether it's for tax bill or for whatever reason, they have one set, they have one database, correct? Well, that you know of. They're on Objection, the line. lack of personal knowledge, lack of foundation. You can answer. Repeat again. Sure. And I just ask counsel um, just to be careful because your chair is I knocking I did notice that, that and I'm trying to avoid it. Yeah. You're talking about the yeah, backing background. for the video. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Thank you. Um, so my question is, I'm just trying to understand um, how the assessor's office um, maintains its database. Do you have any information as to how the assessor's office maintains its database? Objection. Lack of foundation. Lack of personal information. I do not know. Oh, for speculation. Mr. Pink, please make sure I finish my objections before you answer. Your answer was? I do not know. Um, because this started with my question about, about when you may submit something to the assessor office and they reject or kick or kick it back because it doesn't match with their records. Do you remember that line of questioning? Yes. And um, so we've talked it happening two ways. Either one, you may not have the most recent information that they do. And I'm talking about the second possibility, which is that you may have more recent information than they do. And I think you said that was possible for that to happen. Correct? Yes. But you're not sure why it would we're not sure how they wouldn't have your information, right? No. Uh, there are times where on their system, it's a timing matter. They may have partial maps available with the partial numbers, but on the, their system side where it shows the square footage and the ownership information, it may not reflect the latest information at times. With respect to uh, the two parcels that are at issue in this case, um, do you know the names of those parcels, by the way? One was the um, Bonaventure, and one is the condo complex that is built on the, the Greenland project. Okay, so with respect to those two parcels, do you know whether or not the assessor's office had, had um, those parcel changes in its database? Yes, that data was available. It was available to the, well, so whether or not it was available, my question is, do you know whether or not the assessor had that those changes in its database as of April 18? Yes. And how do you know that? That is how I research and nearly completed uh, my research pro process on determining the square footages for these properties. Because you went to the assessor's office um, it was available publicly on their website. And I was going to do my, as mentioned earlier, um, my final verification by visiting the county assessor's office to confirm that data on their terminals. So you don't believe that if you guys had submitted those parcels, the parcels with the new updated information, you don't believe the assessor would have rejected or kicked it, or kicked it back? Objection calls for speculation. Lack of foundation, lack of personal knowledge. You can answer. No. Mr. Chalmers, is this a good time for a lunch break? Sure. Thank you. This is the end of meeting number two. The time is 11.58 a.m. We're off the record. This marks the beginning of media number three. The time is 1.16 p.m. We're on the record. You mentioned um, someone named Miranda. Miranda Pastor. Who is she? She runs the city clerk special assessment office. And do you know, uh, um, she works, do you know like where that is, is that like in an apartment in, in a, do you know where that is? It's um, over in city hall. Did you ever have a, a meeting with her? 
face to face. Uh, pertaining to this? Pertaining to anything. Um, in the past, yeah. And how often would you meet with her? Uh, very infrequently. How about, um, do you remember a meeting um, in February of, um, of, um, of this year, 2017, with her? No. Do you remember her telling you that, that the county recorder gets information before the county assessor does and that, that, that it may take up to six months to a year before the assessor gets the information and is ready to bill on it. I'm sorry, and it's ready to? Bill on the new information. Uh, yes. You do remember that being said to you? Yes. Can you describe that meeting like um, who was it in attendance? Was it just you and her or the other people too? Um, that was a meeting at the, uh, what's it, the county recorder's office or the county, yeah, the county recorder, recorder's office. Um, I arranged that meeting with the county recorders to get a better understanding how their system worked. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the county recorder earlier in the deposition, and I believe you were a little unclear as to exactly what that office was, but do you now have a better recollection of what the county recorder yes. office is? Objection, yeah. argumentative, yeah. lack of foundation. It's the same office where the county assessor is located. The same building, right? Yes. But it's a like separate department than the county assessor? Yes. Do you know the, the functions of the county recorder department? Objection, lack of foundation, lack no. of personal knowledge. Mr. Peng, you have to wait for me to finish my objections before you answer. No, I do not. Okay, but you set up a meeting at the county recorder's office? Yes. And was the meeting between Miranda and you? And along with um, her staff. And just you or other people from your office? Um, Suzanne Hawley was present. So you, Suzanne, a lot, uh, met with Miranda and, um, and her staff? Uh, one, uh, Mario with uh, Miranda's staff and um, some people with the county recorder's office, the, their data processing department, I believe. What was the purpose that you set the meeting up for? Um, hoping to get better access to their data versus um, the filtered uh, public information. What, what, what do you mean by filtered public information? Um, the information that's presented to the public filters out um, the ownership information, such as names and addresses and phone numbers. So you're saying the database that anyone, any member of the public can access had limited, more limited information? Via the internet, yes. So anyone can go on the website and do a search and learn certain information about parcels, is that correct? Yes. And you could do that, correct? Yes, I can. And you set up the meeting to try to find out how you could find out more information? Yes, if they could possibly um, um, provide us better access to the information so that I would not have to make special trips down there to use their terminals to look up information, such as ownership. And uh, so basically you wanted to get access to unfiltered information, is that correct? Yes. And um, So that we are on the same page with the city clerk, which they have the unfiltered access. You wanted to get on the same page as the city clerk, correct? Yes. Um, did Suzanne tell you to set up the meeting, or was that your idea? That was my idea. And did you invite her to come with you for that reason? Yes. Because you thought she might be interested, or why? Why did you invite her? I felt it would be very helpful to and her. And she agreed? Yes. So when you guys were down there, what happened? Uh, oh. We explained to her, uh, explained to them um, why we, what we <coughs> use this information for, and um, and they in turn explained to it how it um, it was processed and um, used uh, uh, to uh, provide to the city clerk's office how they get the information as well. 
And so you s ask, can we get more information? Yes. And what do they say? Uh, they they were going to work on it, but, but and after that, uh, we never heard back from them. Okay. Did um, um, I spoke to Suzanne about that meeting, and she remembers at the meeting that the county that they that you guys were told you both were told that the county recorder gets information before the county assessor, and that it may take six months to a year before the assessor gets the information and is ready to bill on it. The question is, is do you remember that being discussed? Objection argumentative assumes facts, not in evidence. You can answer. Yes. So who made that comment, do you remember? Miranda? No. Um, the person in charge of um, the, that we made the arrangements with, with the county recorder's office. And do you remember that person's name? Do you know? No, I do not. It was it a man or a woman? It was a woman. And um, and can you, in your own words, describe what she said, uh, in, in reference to that? But I just my comment that there was approximately a six month lag before the information that they have becomes uh, uh, public at times. So when you say public, was there a lag between? the county recorder getting the information and the assessor getting the information? The lag was from the time they have the information from the time to the time that it becomes public on the terminals. It's like there's like during the beginning of the year when they're, when they're receiving processing their um, the tax information, there's like a, a freeze on their end. Okay, but do you know if this lag, um, as you described it, do you know if this lag impacted how quickly the assessor had information available to it? No, I do not. Okay, because the original question was um, that, that you said that you remember um, being talked about was that the county recorder gets information before the county assessor and that it may take six months to a year before the assessor gets the information and is ready to bill on it. And I said, do you remember that being discussed? And you said yes. So my question is, is do you remember the lag being between the county recorder and the county assessor? That's my question. Objection argumentative. You can answer. Yes, I do. Okay. So. Um, and so you remember when we were talking about um, the, the assessor sometimes rejecting or kicking back um, information in your database um, for various reasons? Yes. Um, so could one reason that, that the um, assessor rejects or kicks back information in your database be because it didn't have the fully updated information yet because of that six month lag? Objection calls for hypothetical. Lack of foundation calls for speculation. You can answer. No, because the information would have been available on the county assessor site already. Well, that, but that's the lag we were talking about. The lag is between the county recorder and the information going to the county assessor. And my question is, is couldn't a reason that the county assessor not yet have or reject or kick back something, couldn't the reason be because it's in that six month window, six month to a year window, when it doesn't yet have fully updated information from the county recorder? Same objections and argumentative. Yes, it would be possible, but that would be to a, a further change down the line. Can you explain what you mean by that? Let's say a partial change and then during that six months window, it had another change and it did not appear on the system. Okay, how about, how about this example? Um, let's say a parcel changes in January uh, and, and, it's, and the recorder, the county recorder has record of it, a documentation of it, and there's a six month window before the county assessor gets that information. So it won't get the information until June. 
So if you submit a database in February or March with the most recent information from the county recorder, my question is, is wouldn't a reason that the assessor may reject or kick it back because it doesn't yet have the updated information? Objection. Calls for hypothetical, argumentative, and confusing. Lack of foundation. You can answer. Uh, it, not likely, because the city clerk may have seen the information that we presented on their system, which is based on the same information that's on the county assessor's system. Okay, but, but who decides whether to kick back or reject something, the city clerk or the county assessor? The city clerk. Um, there have been incidents where the city clerk, um, because they were working with the latest information, they may choose to do a direct billing on the property because the information is in conflict with the county assessor. Okay, I understand that, but I'm focusing on instances when the assessor, only the assessor, not the city clerk, when the assessor may reject or kick back um, a, a parcel submission, a submission of a parcel. And we talked about different ways that, that could happen. And my question is, is, is what would, let's not strike all that, what would the county assessor do if you submitted a database about a parcel that had changed, but the assessor didn't have the information yet because it was in that six month gap. Objection, argumentative, lack of foundation. Calls for hypothetical, calls for speculation. You can answer. In that situation, the city of special assessments office would um, base the assessment on the materials that we, I am able to provide to them, such as the partial maps, the existing data on a property. Um, there have been times where I've gone to the appraiser's office and met with their GIS, GIS department to obtain information as is being developed on their end. And with that information, um, the city clerk may um, override the county assessors and do that direct billing. Once they've determined the property does exist. Have you ever heard of something called um, an exceptions report? Yes. What's that? Those are parcels that um, had um, something that um, differed from what the county assessors had um, from the time we submit in the during the June time frame. Um, a parcel number may have changed during that time, and the exception report goes back to the city clerk, and they send it to us, and that's where we research and determine why it was rejected. And most of the time, it is due to a partial number change. What about, um, do you know what a parcel change report is? Same thing. Are they, is it, are they just different, were different, um, so the same report, if I could just finish, same report with different names to describe them, or are they two different reports? They are two different reports. Uh, the partial change report we get throughout um, as they appear from the city clerk's office once they are, once that becomes, uh, once they become aware that a parcel has changed, they'll generate a partial change report to it and send it out. Okay, my understanding is, is that a parcel change report is when, is when you submit um, an old parcel number that this assessor doesn't have in their database and an, and a, um, and an exceptions report is when you are submitting information on a new parcel that's changed that they don't have in their database. Do you, does that refresh your recollection on what those two reports are? Objection, argumentative, compound. You can answer. 
the when it's essentially the same there, they are reflecting changes on a state on a, of a parcel. Okay, but is there a different report that's generated in the case of you having outdated information because you're using old parcel information, they have new parcel information, is there a different procedure to make corrections than the situation when you've got the new information and they've got the old information? Is there a difference in the reporting or in the necessary forms to file? No. Um, basically, our objective is to keep our data as current as possible. And those two reports assist us with uh, keeping those that information up to date. Okay, but you're not able to tell me, or are you able to tell me the differences <coughs> between um, exception reports and um, parcel change reports? Objection assumes facts not in evidence. You can answer. No, they, they're essentially very similar. The exception report just occurs primarily after our, our bill, billing submittal. And the parcel change report? doesn't happen after the billing submittal? Uh, those occur at random times throughout the year. Including after the billing submittal? Yes. But the exceptions report only happen after the billing submittal? That is the primary time that we receive that. Other than that, other than that, you're not aware of any differences between the two reports? No. One, I, I do not receive the exception report directly. I'm not sure where, which, op, which department in our company receives it. Do you believe that you just don't know the difference other differences between the two reports or do you believe that you do know that they're basically the same thing they are basically the same thing as far as i am concerned um, my primary one that i i deal with is the a partial change report Um, Miranda, by the way, was she also she was on the call that you had on the April 18th? Yes. And was she the one that decided that the ballots did not need to be changed? Or, sorry, that the new parcel information did not need to be updated? Yes. Do you know whether Miranda had this six month to a year lag time in mind when she decided to proceed with the ballots without updating the parcel information? Objection, lack of personal knowledge calls for speculation. You can answer. Lack of foundation. I would assume so. However, uh, parcel. You answered the question. You answered the question. No, he's not done. Finish the your question. Partial answer. data information for the new parcels has already been made public on the county assessor's site. So, so you mean? So there was no lag time on that. So in that particular situation, you're saying that this six month to a year window wasn't an issue because it already, you're outside any lag time, right? Yes. Because that's where you got the information? That's where I received my preliminary information awaiting final verification on the county assessor's terminals. Because you initially found out about the information from um, Dennis, right? Yes. But then after receiving that information from Dennis, you corroborated it by using publicly available information? Yes. And as far as you're concerned, if it's publicly available, that means the assessor has it too? Yes, of course. It was obtained on the county assessor's website. Do you know if an assessor can bill on a parcel number that it does not have in its database? They cannot. The parcel number is essentially the account number for the property. So I think as we discussed before, if a parcel number is submitted that is not in its database, that's a time when the assessor would, would reject or kick back the parcel number, correct? Correct.
you know if there's a deadline to um, submit assessments for billing purposes? Objection, lack of foundation. You can answer. There is um, a cutout point, and it does vary yearly. Um, the city uh, special assessment office sends out a email notifying the business improvement districts on um, the time frame, the date that they need the information by. It's not June 1st every year? No. Not that, not that I'm aware of. So you're saying it varies? It may vary. Um, is it true that you only submit assessments once a year? I did already answer that, yes, except for a renewal year. Right. So if you did submit a parcel number that the assessor did not have in its database, would the, um, would the assessor um, give you a parcel change report to fill out? Or an acceptance report, or do you know the difference? It most likely question asked and answered a misleading argumentative. You can answer. That, that information would be going back to the city clerk's office. But but would you fill out a parcel change report, or would the city fill out a parcel change report? The, the those reports, the city parcel change reports, I believe, are generated from the city clerk's office to notify the bids that parcel numbers have changed. And then that's how um, that new parcel number will be billed after that report was filled out? Yes. Do you know whether um, an exceptions report um, takes longer to be evaluated or or be um, or the, the process takes longer when you fill out an exceptions report than when you fill out a new parcels report I do not know have you filled out both? I do not fill out those but you've never filled out either I do not fill out either who does fill them out I I don't know someone from DC bid or no they send us the report to notify us that something has changed. Okay, and then when you get that report, you update your database? That's when I do the research to figure out what the changes are, and then I update the database and uh, send the information back to the city clerk's office. Was either report an exceptions report or a new parcel report, or sorry, new, an exceptions report or a parcel change report, was either one, either report, um, filled out in connection with the two uh, parcels at issue in this case? I do not know. I was notified by Dennis Rader via email that uh, the two parcels in question were deleted and new ones were created. And from there, I, which is also documented on the county as a social society, that the parcel has been deleted and a list of their new parcels. Do you know whether or not it's um, permissible for a property owner to be billed more than what was on the ballot? More than what was on the ballot? Yeah. 
I object. It's lack of foundation. You can answer. I don't know. Do you know whether or not the property owner can receive a ballot with a higher assessment than on the than on the original petition? Yes. In what circumstance would 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 that be permissible? If the partial number changed, and and as part of this change, uh, their square footage changed and increased. Have you ever had a circumstance in your experience where a parcel was split into different parcels, but you did not have the square footage information on the new parcels yet at that point? At what point? At the point where you realized there were, they were split. Did you ever did you ever have a parcel that was split into many parcels but not have information about square footage? Yes. And what would you do in that situation? I would have to do further research if it was not available on the county assessor's site. Uh, and what, such as going to the GIS department to review their parcel maps. Any other um, types of research you might be able to do? Uh, may review the information on the architect sites that built a particular building to attempt to extract the information. How about the owners? Might, might you talk to them? On occasion, we do talk to the owners. So if one parcel divides divides up into 10, have you ever just divided the total square footage equally amongst the 10 parcels? Yes, we have done that with the approval of the city clerk's office. And uh, why would you seek their approval, or why would you want to do that? Because uh, they would also work in conjunction with me in obtaining uh, researching this information as well for the individual parcels. And if all avenues have been exhausted, um, we may elect to take the total square footage, of the footprint of the property, and divide it. Would you always do that? No. When would that not be a good thing to do? If uh, better information was available. What's better information? Um, inf square footage that presented on the county's assessor's website would be would be better. Has it ever been your experience that a parcel can divide up into multiple parcels, but there result there would not result in any economic input impact to the assessment? No, it usually will uh, result in either a lower or a higher assessment on that, the, the existing part of property. Um, so, but, but if it were the case that you had one parcel divide up into 10, so if there's a thousand square feet, just to make it simple, and you divide up into 10 parcels, and each one now is 100 square feet, each parcel is 100 square feet, um, isn't it common that that the 10 parts 
are the same assessment as the one whole, as the whole? Not necessarily. Not necessarily, but is it possible? Objection argumentative calls for speculation. You can answer. On very rare occasions, if it was just strictly land, the exception would be a condominium, a building being converted. A condominium, the common spaces such as the hallways would be excluded because each unit is a individual parcel now. Let's mark this as a next exhibit. Thank you. This is three? Three, yes. Exhibit three is has a cover title page that says Downtown Center Business Improvement District Management District Plan, dated March 2017. Um, and it says, for a property-based business improvement district in downtown center Los Angeles. <coughs> Do you, um, have you ever seen a document that, like this before? Yes. Um, are you familiar with it? Yes. Okay. Um, it's a long document, so I just have excerpts behind it. So if you turn to the second page of the exhibit, which is... Um, page 23. Um, if you look at page 23, it says, it says under um, the section 3, vacant or undeveloped land. It says vacant slash undeveloped land will be assessed on land square footage. The new structure square footage will be assessed when the building receives a certificate of occupancy. New structure assessments for the current fiscal year will be prorated to the date they receive the certificate of occupancy. Do you um do you, are you do you know what a certificate of occupancy is? Yes, I do. What is it? It's a certificate that um, basically informs uh, the public that the property is habitable. Yeah. Um, anything else? No. So is it true, though, you see the part here where it says new structure square footage will be assessed when the building receives a certificate of occupancy? So is there, is there do you, do you, as part of your job, do you ever wait for a certificate of occupancy to be issued? It depends on the property if it's going to get one. And how do you know that? Uh, there are certain properties, especially with the high rises, we may never see one. And so you don't have to wait for one before you start assessing square footage? For no. In the, in the case of the two parcels that are at issue in this case, was there any wait for a certificate of occupancy to see if one was issued? The, the billing on those two properties uh, will not be till 2018. And the city clerk requested the information to be included on the ballot. You're just talking about Dennis's Dennis, email? Dennis, yes. Okay, but irrespective of that, do you know if there was an issue with whether or not there would be a certificate of occupancy for those properties? For the Greenland property, most likely. For the Bonaventure, maybe. So for one, most likely for the other, maybe, right? Yes. The parcels would still need to be recorded in our databases along with their square footage or excluded completely as far as their square footage. But you're saying because the city clerk's office asked you to make the update that it was their call as to whether or not you would wait for a certificate of occupancy or not, correct? Yes. And here they made the call not to wait, so it wasn't an issue for you, right? 
No. When you say no, do you mean I'm correct what I said? I can go back and read Maybe the question. Maybe you should repeat the question. question. So my question was, um, my question was is, and here you made the call not to wait for the certificate of occupancy um, because the city clerk made the call, so you, you, so you decided that um, you didn't need to wait before you assess square footage, correct? Objection, argumentative, and compound. Since this is airspace within the Bonaventure, the land was already being assessed. So these, the new parcels um, will be assessed based on their footprint. They would need to be assessed based on their footprint. Have you ever had the city clerk say to you, wait, we're still waiting for a certificate of occupancy? No. But if you did wait, would it be only after hearing from them? Or would you decide on your own to wait for the certificate of occupancy? Objection, calls for speculation, calls for hypothetical lack of foundation. You can answer. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, the question is, but if you did wait for a certificate of occupancy, um, would it be only after hearing from the city clerk to wait for a certificate of occupancy? Same objections. Never been a had this occur, so I do not know. You've never had, you never waited for a certificate of occupancy? No, a lot of times we would never see a certificate of occupancy unless we ask for or look for it. Okay. Um, if you turn the page on that exhibit, if you look at the, this is at page 26, if you look at the bottom section with the heading budget adjustments, the second the last paragraph on the page, it says, if an error is discovered on a parcel's assessed square footages, the district may investigate and correct the assessed footages after confirming the correction with the LA County Assessor Data and City Clerk's Office. The correction will be made in accordance with the assessment methodology and may result in an increase or decrease to the parcel's assessment. Um, have you ever, um, are you familiar with that, with that um, language? Yes. And um, can you tell me what that means to you? If um, down the line um, a property were to be reappraised by the county assessors and their square footage change, um, we would turn update our data to reflect it. Um, first of all, I guess I should go back to let's go back to the title page. Do you know? Can you tell me what this document is? It's the the management plan for the downtown center business improvement district. Okay, is this, this is drafted by um, DC bid? Objection, lack of foundation, lack of personal knowledge, you can answer. Um, the DC bid in conjunction with uh, Urban Place Consulting, our consultant. Drafts this. Same objections. Yes? Yes. Do you know if it's approved by anybody? Same objections. I imagine it would be Carol Schatz. But you're not sure? I'm not sure. But do you look at this as kind of, you look at this as your governing manual for how to do your job? Yes. So um, on this last paragraph again on page 26, um, this says if an error is discovered on a parcel's assessed square footages, do you know whether or not that error that it's referring to can also refer to an error because of a parcel change that was made that wasn't reflected on the ballot or on the, or on, or in the database? Rephrase. Sure. Um, the error that this is referring to on this on this page, do you know whether an error might also include an error that was caused by uh, a parcel undergoing changes and the most accurate information not being reflected in the database? Yes. So in the case of our case here with the two parcels in question, if the ballots went out with the old parcel information, 
and that was considered to be, could that be considered to be an error discovered on a parcel's assessed square footages? No, had I been allowed to generate the updated information as requested by the city clerk. Right then, there would have been no error, right? There would have been no error. But if, if the ballots went out as is, and, uh, and there was an error, there, there would be an error then, because you weren't allowed to finish your, your work, right? Yes, because it was being withheld. That's my, my only question is, is that would the error that went out as the result of you not being allowed to, to do what you wanted to do, is that an error that would be governed by this paragraph? Objection argumentative with respect to the term error and you not being allowed to do what you wanted to do. You can answer. I do not know. Turn the page to page 27. Under the heading that says future development, it starts by saying, as a result of continued development, the district may experience the addition or subtraction of accessible footage for parcels included and assessed within the district boundaries. Would you agree with that? Yes. Then it continues, the modification for parcel improvements within the district which changes upwards or downwards, the amount of total footage assessed for these parcels will, pursuant to Government Code 53750, be prorated to the date they receive the temporary and or permanent certificate of occupancy. Do you, um, do, you agree with, do you agree with that too? Yes. Objection, lack of foundation. Parcels that experience a loss of building square footage need to notice the district of changes. Have you ever had that experience where a parcel experiences a loss of square footage and notifies the district of changes? Yes. The next paragraph says, in future years of the bid term, the assessments for the special benefits bestowed upon the included bid parcels may change in accordance with the assessment methodology formula listed in the management district plan and engineer's report provided the assessment rate does not change. If the assessment formula changes and increases assessments, then a Proposition 218 ballot will be required for approval of the formula changes. So these paragraphs appear to um, contemplate or anticipate um, parcel modifications and changes throughout the, the, the year. Do you agree? Objection yes. argumentative. You said yes? Yes. Um, so the, um, in our situation with the two parcels at issue in this case, um, that type of uh, modification and development was something that, that this document um, addresses, correct? Yes. If you look at, at the next paragraph under assessment appeal procedure, it says property owners may appeal assessments that they believe are inaccurate. Have you ever been aware of a property owner appealing an assessment that they believe to be inaccurate? Yes. And so in this case, when the, the, when, when the Bonaventure or the other property were assessed maybe incorrectly because of your information was excluded, they would have the opportunity to appeal? Yes. Then it says appeals must be in writing stating the grounds for appeal and filed with the owners association prior to April 1 of each year. Appeal shall be limited to the current assessment year. Any appeal not filed by April 1 shall not be valid. In any case, appeals will only be considered for the current year, will not be considered for prior years. Um, did you ever um, refer to this uh, manual or, or document what in, in, the, in, the, in the course of performing your job? Yeah, objection yes. argumentative.
do uh, changes in total district square footage affect other property owners? Yes, during the petition and ballot phase. How, how do they affect other owners? Because it affects the weight of the value of the petition. But if there's no change in square footage, then other parcel assessments are not affected, correct? Correct, yes. So in this case, with these two properties, if the parcel changes were made and there was no change in square footage, would the assessment rates of other parcel owners be affected? No. Had it been determined yet that the square footage on the parcels had to change in these two parcels? Yes. And who made that assessment or determination? During the review of the new parcels, mainly on the Greenland. Was that you who made that decision or, 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 or determination? Yes, based on the information available from the county assessor's website on square footage. You determined that there was um, more total square footage yes. to, to be assessed? Substantial. And how about the Bonaventure? They had a slight decrease. And would that, would that, um, how would that impact other property owners? For the Bonaventure, very insignificantly, it was a very small decrease. That would insignificantly decrease other property owners' obligations? Yes. Objection argumentative with respect to the term insignificantly. Okay, let's take a break. Okay. This marks the end of meeting number three. The time is 2.04 p.m. We're off to that This marks the beginning of meeting number four. The time is 2.18 p.m. We're on the record. <coughs> we'll get out to Ely, I'm sorry. One L on this last name. Do you consider um, your job to um, primarily involve compiling and collecting data? It takes up a majority of my time. And the purpose of the collection of that data is to provide accessible square footage? Yes, as well as ownership. Um, your job is not to interpret that data? No. And your job is not to make decisions regarding what the data show? Is that correct? Elaborate? Um, let me go back to the question before, because just to clarify. So when I said, and your job is not to interpret that data, you said no. Is that, were you agreeing with me that? It's correct that your job is not to interpret that data? No. By analyzing the data. Okay, so when you said no, you were disagreeing with me. So your job is, you believe, to interpret the data you're collecting, correct? Yes. Okay, how do you, how do you interpret it? Objection vague. You can answer. I'm analyzing the data from various sources to determine the appropriate square footage. And can you give an example of how you might interpret data you collect? From the county's uh, website 
their partial maps. Um, square footage from building and safety, for examples. Are you done with your answer? Yes. So how is that, can you explain how that is an example of you interpreting that? That's how I would interpret it to determine the square footage for a particular parcel. So you look at a map and you determine how much square footage there is, right? Yes, that or the, the stated square footage on the assessor site. And then, um, and then, and then you make a determination of how much accessible square footage there is. Yes. Um, but is that where your interpretation ends after you determine accessible square footage? Do you do anything else in terms of the interpretation of the data? I. From that information, I plug it into the database, which in turn calculates the assessment based on the type of property. The, the money, uh, right? Yes. And is, um, is it your decision as to what ends up on the ballot? Uh, Pretty much so. Um, Suzanne Holly will review it, and and then it goes to the city clerk's office for a, a final review. A final decision, right? Yes. Let's mark this as um, Exhibit 4. blank page with a section on it that says 2.8 assessment of records. I'll read it. It says corporation shall maintain a complete database or other comprehensive listing current to the most recent property tax year available containing the following information. The assessor parcel number and situs address of all parcels in the district, the name and address of the legal owner of each parcel, the amount of assessment levied upon each parcel, the proportionate financial obligation of the assessment levied upon each parcel in relation to the entire district assessment and the assessment calculations for each parcel, including all variables used in the calculation of the assessment. Said database shall be updated at least once each year during district operations to reflect change conditions such as parcel consolidation and to accurately reflect the status of the assessed individual parcels as provided in the management district plan. The city clerk may, at the city clerk's discretion, provide assistance in compiling or correcting assessment data or information relative to properties in the district. However, the city clerk shall in no way be obligated to prepare, produce, or correct such data or information. Corporation agrees to make such district data available at the corporation's office for inspection by property owners in the district during regular business hours. Do you recognize this paragraph? No. Um, okay, do you, um, do you, do you, um, let me just break it down. Do you, uh, is it, was it your job to maintain a complete database um, containing all this information, assessor parcel number, inside this address of all parcels in the, parcels in the district? Was that yes. your job? Yes. Yes. Um, is this the database that we've been testifying about? You've been testifying about in this deposition. Yes. Um, and so your database included um, the name and address of the legal owner of each parcel. Yes. 
The amount of assessment levied upon each parcel? Yes. The proportion of financial obligation of the assessment levied upon each parcel? Yes. And the assessment calculations for each parcel, including all variables used in the calculation of the assessment? Yes. And did you update it at least once a year? Yes. Did the city clerk, in its discretion, provide you assistance in correcting and compiling this information? Yes. Um, so would you agree that this is an accurate description of a big part of your job? Yes. Do you rely on public records to collect this information that well, we just read? Yes. Uh, what else do you rely on besides public, public records? Uh, newspaper articles, architectural information, as well as information direct from the property owner. Are you the primary person uh, responsible for communicating the data collected to the city clerk? Yes, with assistance from other members of the office. Like who? Uh, Suzanne Holly, uh, Elon with our research, research, economic development research department. Do you issue ballots? Excuse me? Do you issue the ballots? Those are generated by the city clerk's office. So no. Do you know how the how the information you provide is used on the ballots? Yes. How? The dollar amount, the parcel number, and their percentage of ownership within the district. Does the city clerk match the parcel numbers against the county records to see if there are any changes since the petitions were issued? Objection, lack of foundation, lack of personal knowledge. You can answer. I do not know. When you, um, when we were, our discussion earlier about, about um, the phone conversation with the city and Carol, by the end of the conversation, did you feel that the city was asking you to do something illegal? Yes, the city clerk's office. And that's the same thing that you believe Carol was asking you to do, correct? Yes. Do you, um, do you know who Lena Mulhall is? She's the office manager. Do you, do you know her? Yes. Um, have you ever talked to her about? Um, have you ever talked to her about at all after your your resignation from DC bid? Just as friends. So you've spoken with her since your your employment ended. Yes. Have you ever talked to her about this lawsuit? Not, no, not specifically. Have you spoken to her generally about this lawsuit? Yes. What have you said to her generally about this lawsuit? that um, I felt um, what happened when I resigned was unjust that I was going to be pursuing a lawsuit. Did you say that to her before you filed suit? Yes. How did she respond? Uh, good. Go for it. Did, um, do you know if she agreed with you? Yes. Do you know if she, um, did, did she know about, you? Uh, was she there when, when you resigned? Was she in the room? No, but she was in the hallway for the, the occurrence in the hallway. So she saw that, and um, and so and so. She, did you know that she supported you before you told her that you wanted to file a lawsuit? No. No, you didn't know. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Did you say anything else besides? Did you say anything else besides good? Go for it. 
I hope you uh, get what you want. I hope you get what you want? Yeah. Anything else did you say? Not that I remember. And did you say anything else to her about the lawsuit? No, that was essentially it. That was the extent of the conversation? Yeah. Yes? Yes. How about, um, do you know who Hal Bastion is? Yes. Who's he? He was the former vice president of the Business Improvement District Economic Development Department. Um, does he, or did he work for DC Bid? Yes. Did you work with him? Yes. Since your uh, resignation, have you talked to him about this lawsuit or the fact that you were thinking of filing a lawsuit? Yes, uh, thinking during the course of a lunch. So you had lunch with him after your resignation? Yeah. And what did you say to him about this, about this possible lawsuit? It was just briefly mentioned that I was considering it. And did you say why, the basis for your lawsuit? Not at that time, no. You just said generally I'm considering suing them? Yeah. Did you say anything else to him about this action or possible action? Not that I recall. How did he respond? Uh, he was supportive and suggested a, that I, sh I should pursue it. Did he say anything else? No. We essentially changed subjects to other Other things? Other things, yes. Did, um, did Hal's feedback contribute to your decision to file a lawsuit? No. Were you going to do it anyway, or you were still thinking about it? I was still thinking about it at the time. I'm sorry, Mr. Chalmers, I need a short break. Okay. Thank you. This marks the end of media number four. This marks the beginning of meeting number five. The time is 2.43 p.m. We're on the record. Mr. Peng, do you remember really early in this deposition, I asked you if you had spoken to anybody who worked at DC bid either before or currently about this loss and you said no. Do you remember that testimony? Yes. And then we talked about two people who you in fact had spoken to, Lena and Hal, correct? Yeah. Is that because you didn't remember them when I asked you the first time? Yes. Is there thinking about it a little more hard now? Is there anyone else who you think you might have spoken to that you didn't remember this morning? Um, possibly mention it to Ron Coco, which is the employee of the DCBID. Ron, last name Coco? Coco. Did you not spell the last name? C-O-L-C-O-L. C-O-L-C-O-L. Okay. Um, and do you have a recollection of speaking to him about this lawsuit? Uh, just basically for advice. When do you think you spoke to him? Before or after you filed the lawsuit? Well, before. And did you, where, where, where were you meeting with him? Were you meeting with him at, um, at, at lunch or some on the phone? Was it a phone conversation? Do you remember? Um, it was at his home. Did you travel to his home? Yes. Were you a guest? Were you invited? Did you just stop by? Um, I just stopped by. Randomly. Randomly. Without an invitation. Yes. Okay. So you stopped by and then and then what what did you knock on the door and he answered? Um, his wife answered. And then you asked to speak to him? Yeah. And what, what did you guys talk about? Um, just um, how things were going and And uh, so you asked him how things were going or he asked you how things were going? Uh, I was asking him how things were going. At work? At or work. Just yeah. generally. And in general. 
and then when did it talk? When did you talk about this possible lawsuit? Uh, just somewhere during the course of the conversation. Was that the purpose that you stopped by? No, no. We're, we were actually close friends. So you stopped by to talk about um, other matters. Yes. Uh, and this came up. Yes, his, uh, his son was expecting a, uh, a new addition to the family. So therefore, you just wanted to stay in touch with them. Yes. And then at some point, you brought up uh, the possibility that you would be considering filing a lawsuit. Yes. And uh, what did he say? Um, yeah, he essentially wished me the best. Like the other two did. Yeah. Did he say anything else that you can remember sitting here today? Not that I can remember. Did you say anything else to him that you can remember sitting here today? No. What about um, Ken Nakano? Do you know who that is? He was the former director of operations. For DC bid. For the DC bid. Did you ever speak to him? at any time after resignation about a possible or actual lawsuit you would file? No, not that I can recall. But have you spoken to him in any capacity since you uh, resigned? Just for possibilities of having a lunch, but never, our schedules never coincided. So you never saw him face to face? No. Is that correct? Correct. And what about Veronica Perez? Do you know who that is? Yes. Who's that? Um, she uh, she used to be with Central City Association, and I think she might be uh, one of the board members with the DCBID. And have you spoken to her after your resignation about a possible lawsuit or no. an actual lawsuit against? No. 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 Make sure he finishes his question, Mr. Payne, before you answer. Have you spoken to her about anything at all since leaving, since resigning? Um, she called me on possibility of recommendations on a new computer for her use. <coughs> for what? A new computer <coughs> for her personal use. And during that conversation, you didn't mention this lawsuit? No. Even possibility of it? No. Okay, what about, do you know who Paklar Pelavgian is? Spelled P-A-K-L-A-R, or P-I-K-L-A-R. And then last name, P-I-L-A-V-J-I-A-N. Do you know that is? Yes. Who's that? Um, he is the owner of the St. Vincent Court and former chair of the DCBID board. And have you spoken to him since I'm um, resigning? Yes. Did you speak to him at all about this lawsuit, potential or actual? No. Uh, when you did speak to him, when was it and what, in what circumstance? It was about three weeks ago during a course of a lunch with uh, some old friends. So you spoke to him um, at that lunch for the first time since resigning? Uh, first time was on the day I resigned. I informed him that I resigned. And then after that, three weeks ago was the first time you spoke to him? Yes. And at that lunch, nothing came up about this lawsuit? No. Um, anybody else, thinking back hard, anybody else you spoke to about this lawsuit? Not that I can recall. No one who currently works at DC bid, correct? No. No one who used to work at DC bid. No. Nobody who's affiliated with DC bid in any way, any partners, third parties, vendors, government entities, about this lawsuit. Nobody. Not that I recall. I want to um, mark as an exhibit, ex 
exhibit five. Exhibit five is has a heading, City of Los Angeles, California, uh, mailing date April 18, 2017, and it's the heading is Notice of Public Hearing to establish the Downtown Center Property-Based Business Improvement District. Um, the third page of it is a ballot. Um, do you recognize this document? It's the first time I've seen a ballot for this particular go around. For this this year's um, election, this year's ballot. Yes. Then in previous years, have you seen ballots? Yes. And do, they, do they look like this? Uh, very similar. Which is a notice and then accompanied by a ballot. Yes. And this is what's mailed to property owners. Yes. So is this telling property owners that this is dated April 18, right? Do you see that, the mailing date? OK, yes. Um, are you looking at the ballot or the, or the notice? Oh. If you look at the notice, the first two, first page. So the second page of mine, Mr. Chalmers, is illegible. Is the original legible at all? That's all I've got. but. I can, um, I mean, it's, you can read it. It's just I'm just saying for the record, I faint. Mean, there, there's parts that I can't read, but the exhibit is what it is. I, I'm just, for the record, saying that there okay. is parts that I cannot read at all. I wonder if I have a better copy. Um, I mean, it makes no difference to me. I'm, I'm, the exhibit is what it is. Can I see, um, can I see your copy? Um, let's take a break. I want to make copies sure. of this new copy. Thank you. This marks the end of meeting number five. The time is 54 p.m. We're off the record. This marks the beginning of meeting number six. The time is 2.57 p.m. We're on the record. So I want to substitute out the old Exhibit 5 for um, this document, which is a more legible copy, but only the first two pages. The third page will remain as it is. The ballot will remain. Okay, give me a minute. Thank you. That's better. Are these the same? Um, it's a three-page document. That's the third page of that exhibit. There you go. Thanks. So, as you've testified to, you see on the first page the, the, the heading mailing date, April 18, 2017? Yes. And this was the same day that you resigned? Yes. Um, does this lead you to believe that the ballots were mailed out on April 18th, the Tuesday? Yes. And that, that's was consistent with what Dennis had told you previously, right? They were holding it until the data was available, yes. Okay. Um, and then if you, then this as a notice of public hearing, can you explain the, how a public hearing and the ballot process, how they work together? Do you, if you know. Not really. I've only been to like one. One public hearing? Yes. Okay. Um, if you um, if you turn to the second page, it 
gives instructions for to complete the assessment ballot, which is the third page of this. If you turn to the third page, is that the assessment ballot? Yes. Um, and then it gives instructions for how you have to receive it by the close of the public hearing. So, um, so in this case, the hearing is on June 6, 2017. Do you see that on the first page? Yes. And so they need to get these ballots out to people so they can have sufficient time to vote before the hearing, correct? Correct. And then if you look at the third page, which is the ballot itself, um, there is a notation where either the person approves or disapproves. Do you see that? Yes. And at the bottom, there are the parcel numbers with a proposed assessment. Yes. And the total amount, the total dollar assessed, right? Yes. Now, if uh, if a property owner receives a ballot and sees that the parcel numbers, for example, are not current because of maybe a division of parcels, do you know what the property owner is supposed to do when they receive the ballot? Objection, lack of foundation, lack of personal knowledge. You can answer. That. I do not know. Would this be an opportunity for the property owner to to say something to ask for a correction? If you know. Objection, lack of personal knowledge, lack of foundation. You can answer. I suppose. So if you look at the second page, the last paragraph, it says, any person having a question or comment regarding city council hearing proceedings or regarding the establishment of the proposed district may telephone the special assessment section of the city clerk's office at the following number and state such a question or comment to the deputy clerk assigned to answer inquiries. Um, do you have any information if whether or not um, a property owner receiving a ballot with an error on it should or could call that number to to discuss the discrepancy? Objection. Lack of foundation. Lack of personal knowledge. You can answer. I suppose. You suppose that they could call that number? They, they could. Yes. Same objections. Do you know what the city clerk um, is, would do if they did get contacted by a property owner after receiving the ballot? I do not know. Might the city clerk contact you or the bid to, to try to investigate the, the, the apparent discrepancy? Objection, compound, hypothetical, lack of personal knowledge, lack of foundation. You can answer. Yes, possibly. Have you ever in your years been notified by the city after the ballot had been issued about a possible discrepancy? No. That's never happened? Not that I recall. Are, are you a lawyer? No. Have you received any legal training of any kind? No. Um, do you, um, on, um, and I may have asked this before and I apologize if I have, but um, on what basis do you conclude that it was, it would have been illegal or it was illegal for you to, or for the bid not to, uh, 
um, update the parcel information before the ballots went out. I'm trash and asked and answered. Uh, oh, other than what I've told you, don't talk about anything that you and I have discussed. The information was already publicly available, and the city clerk notified me that the updated information be reflected on the ballots. Yeah, I understand that's what happened, or what you say happened, but my question is, do you have any, besides conversations with your attorney, do you have any reason to believe that, that was illegal Objection. against the law? Objection argumentative. Other than what you've already said. I, I would not know. I'm not a lawyer. But you had this objective belief when you resigned that it was against the law, right? No, but um, I am not presenting to the property owner with the most updated information for them to make their decision on this ballot. So subjectively, in your mind, when you resigned or just before you resigned, were you thinking this is against the law? Were you thinking this is not right? Were you thinking this is not proper procedure? What was in your head at the time of your resignation? I was thinking that this is not right, um, especially um, part of my, as part of my job is to make every effort to try to keep that database as most up to date as possible. And so you weren't thinking at the time that this is against the law? No. Is that correct what I said? Yes. But it did not. I, it was not appropriate. I felt it was not appropriate to withheld hold this information, especially after it's being requested by the city clerk. Let's mark this next one as Exhibit 6. Exhibit 6 is an email chain with a two-page email chain with the first email in the chain at the bottom from Dennis Rader to Herman Pang dated Friday, April 14, 2017 at, um, at 3.15 p.m. And it says, hi, Herman. Here are the parcel changes we talked about. And then it gives one parcel number, and it says, this parcel number has split into two different part series of parcels, 082 through 223. And then it says 001 through 168. Um, and then it talks about a different parcel, and ending in 007, and they say that parcel is now 008 through 053. And then he concludes by saying, hopefully you can get the square foot of these new parcels and send us the new assessments. Is this the initial email that triggered the series of events that yes. led to your, culminated in your resignation? Yes. Um, and after this email, you called him on the phone? Yes. And you had the conversation that we, we talked about, right? Yes. I want to um, focus on the, the last sentence right before he says thanks, where he says, hopefully you can get the square foot of these new parcels and send us the new assessments. What, what did you interpret that to mean? He was hoping that I was able to utilize the resources that were available to me to determine what the new square footages were. Um, did you interpret this as a, as a demand for the, um, for the new square footage? No, because he does not appear from this email to know if that information is yet available. So
So you believe that hopefully was referring to whether or not it was available or not? Yes. Um, the first sentence says, here are the parcel changes we talked about. So was this after the conversation you had with them on the phone or before the conversation you had with them on the phone? He did leave me a voicemail prior to this email informing that there were going to be some partial changes that he was aware of. And what I remember, I requested that he email me the information so that I could start the research process on it. How did you request that he send you the parcel information? Via email. So there was an email that he left you a voicemail? He left me a voicemail. And you responded with an email? No, I called him back to discuss the, you know, asking him if he could send me the details, which and resulted in this email. And then was there another phone call, or that was it? You had the one phone call? Um, there was another phone call after that, after receiving this email. Um, it's like, um, how soon do you need it by? We already talked about that yes. phone conversation. All right, and then, um, and then on Monday, after getting this email on the 14th, did you speak to anybody at DC Bid about this issue? Not till Monday when I met with Suzanne Holly to let her know that the uh, partial numbers have been changed. Why did you wait? Till Friday, I mean, why did you not tell anyone on Friday? Why did you wait till Monday? Because it was late in the day on Friday, and it could have waited till Monday morning. But you didn't like forward. You could have forwarded this Friday, April 14 message that had pretty much everything you needed to say. Just did a quick forward to Suzanne or or, or Carol. You didn't. Objection, argumentative, compound, and confused. No, I didn't. And because it was late in the day. This was late in the day. Then on Monday at 2 p.m., you write back and you say, Hi, Dennis. I was able to obtain preliminary unit square footage from the parcel maps for the Greenland Metropolis site. And then you say, then you talk about that parcel being split into two different series of parcels. Then you say, before I go running over to the assessor's office to look up owner info, can you see if it is available on your system yet? Had, do you know if by this time had you told um, Suzanne about the issue? Yes, I believe, it, if I recall, it was on Monday morning when I informed Suzanne of the split. And as part of that conversation um, for the Bonaventure, since Peter Zinn is one of the board members of the DCIB ID, she suggested I also email him asking um, why his uh, property was being divided. Okay, and then, um, and then he writes back to you, let me check, same day, Monday, let me check the county PDB, you know what PDB stands for? Public database. And then he writes back to you, according to the county PDP, PDB, the new parcels are still the same ownership as the old one, Either that or they haven't updated it yet, and you write back, thanks, on Monday. Um, is that, do you have any other communications with Dennis that around this time? Uh, I think that's it. We go off the record for a moment. Sure. This marks the end of meeting number six. The time is 3.13 p.m. Thank you. 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 Thank the time is 3.17 p.m. We are on the record. Did you consider um, this email from Dennis to be a last-minute request? Um, yes, after um, talking with them, after receiving it. Now, focusing on the two parcels in, in particular, do you know who the owners were of these two parcels? Um, one is Greenland, and one is the Bonaventure, or Times. And you needed to verify ownership, right? I was going to go 
during later during the day and ver do some verification on the ownership on the terminals at the central office. Yes. And square footage, right? Yes. Did you um, use a parcel map for Greenland to verify the square footage? Yes. And how about the Bonaventure? How are you going to verify that? Um, if I recall, it was on the parcel map as well as on the, the, the assessor site as well for both. Did you um, notify Suzanne Hawley and, and Carol to contact the Bonaventure to get information on their parcel? Uh, Suzanne Hawley suggested that I contact the Bonaventure to obtain uh, the reasoning why. And did you contact the Bonaventure? I sent an email and they, their response was that the uh, um, property was being converted to condos. They did not have further information on square footage. Did you ever contact uh, Peter Zen? Uh, the initial email was to Peter Zen, and he referred it to someone else in his organization. And who is Peter Zen? Do you know? He was. He was. He's a member of the DCBID board. Okay, that's Mark. I say seven. changing. This marks the beginning of meeting number eight. The time is 3.25 p.m. We're on the record. So looking at exhibit seven, um, if you look at the first email, which starts on the second page, from you to Michael Charchinsky, dated April 17, 2017. And um, you write, hi, Michael, I was just notified by the city clerk that the parcel numbers number ending in 007, I'm just paraphrasing that, that the Bonaventure Hotel resides on a split into multiple new parcel numbers. Um, could you provide me with the details for the new parcels, i.e. APN, legal owner name, listed for each APN, use description and square footage. The city clerk would like to use the new information for the DC bid renewal battle ballots that are going, going to be mailed out this week. So uh, when you wrote that on Monday morning at 9, 16 a.m., when you said mail it out this week, did you feel that it was more urgent than that? Uh, actually, I wasn't expecting them to respond back to me. You expect to hear nothing, and then, and then what? What would you have done if they didn't respond to you? I would have to um, go back to my original uh, recourse of going to the Susser's uh, site to look up information which is ultimately what I had to do. So when you said mailed out this week, you really meant mailed out tomorrow, right? On the on the Tuesday. Yes. And then um, and then Michael Charchinsky writes back saying, "I forwarded this request to our owner's office." Um, and then is that Peter Zen? Objection. Lack of foundation. Lack of personal knowledge. So you write only to Michael Charchinsky. He writes back to you saying, I forwarded this request to our owner's office, and he copies Peter Zen on that email and adds new people to the email. Do you see that? Yes. And then you reply all saying, thank you, Michael. And then Peter Zen writes back saying, all owners are the same. Nothing changed except for subdivisions to allow condos. You say thanks. Do you see that? Yes. So this is all occurring Monday before noon, right? Yes. So after you have this information, are you ready to go forward, or do you still have to do more work? I still have to look up the square footages for these new parcels. And on that day, did you? Is that when you went to the uh, the assessor's office to to look up the information? Uh, no, I, I found it online. 
at from your office. Yes. But uh, Mr. Zan didn't provide you with any square footage information, right? Right, I, which I would uh, would expect that most property owners would. Sorry, you would expect that they uh, would provide it with you? Most property owners very seldomly would provide that information to us. Do you know if uh, Mr. Zen signed the petition? Uh, yes, I believe so. He's very supportive of the DCBID. Okay, looking at the, the Greenland property, um, how were you able to verify the ownership information for Greenland? Um, assessor's website. The same way as you ultimately did for the Bonaventure, yes. too. Correct? Yes. But you did not have any communication with anyone from Greenland about ownership or square footage? Not that I recall. Is this a large development downtown, the Greenland development? Uh, very large. Is it one of the largest developments downtown? I, I think so. And it, it was going to divide into over 300 units? Yes. Do you think Greenland was aware that this parcel had been subdivided? Objection, lack of personal knowledge, lack of foundation, calls for speculation. You can answer. Uh, I do not know. Do you, um, why didn't you reach out? Did you have a, a contact for, um, for square footage? Did you, sorry, to strike that. Did you have a contact at Greenland that you could talk to? No. Did you, re did you reach out to any contact anywhere? for square footage information on the Greenland property? No. Why not? Because it was already available on the county assessor's site. Now, is that the same thing as using parcel maps? Parcel maps as well as what's listed on their site, yes. So how is, is parcel maps different than what's listed? Does, does, sorry, does the site sometimes contain more information than parcel maps do? Yes, at times. For this particular occasion on the Greenland property, did it contain more information than the parcel maps? Uh, the parcel maps um, contained, contained more information, which is also on the assessor site. So using parcel maps, you'd have the most information? For um, this particular building, yes. Without talking to the owner, right? Yes. Um, but you can get more information from, from the owner, right? Not likely. Because the owner would be like Peter Zen and not give you as much? Is that what you're thinking? Well, um, I don't think the owner's going to remember, you know, some 300 parcels. And, and they probably will have to refer to a map themselves. Okay, the last, last major topic I want to talk about is um, going back to the conference call that we talked about earlier. Um, you, you suggested that, um, that Carol, um, just after saying what, just called the city clerk's office um, with you in, in her office. But um, is, is it true that, that she asked you to explain um, what, what you meant first? Objection, argumentative, vague, and ambiguous. You can answer. I, I essentially did, um, as you know, I stated, informed her that you know, these two parcel numbers have been deleted and they were being divided. I know, but you said that, but then did you also try to, when she said what, did you try to explain further about what that meant or, or how, how that, what you meant by that? Uh, yes, I um, informed her um, that they were being converted to uh, condominiums and a lot of times that a single parcel number may be used as a placeholder during the course of the development of the property. Did you um, use parcel maps themselves to try to explain what you were, what you were
were talking about to Carol? Uh, no, I did not have time. You don't remember standing with her on a desk showing her certain maps and certain divisions going on at the time? I had the pile, all the paperwork laying on my desk. Um, it, I may have, but I don't remember. Um, is it true that is it true that Carol called the city because she was trying to get further explanation on what you were trying to explain to her? Objection. Calls for speculation, lack of foundation, lack of personal knowledge. I, uh, I wouldn't know. Um, was it evident to you that after you were done explaining what you were trying to say? Was it evident to you that Carol still didn't understand what you were trying to explain to her? I suspect that may be the case since these partial changes like this are very routine. You said you suspect that could be the case? Yes. That she didn't understand what you were trying to say? Yes. And does her saying what, did that, um, did that, when she first said what, did you interpret that to be that she didn't understand what you were explaining to her? No. What did you interpret the what to mean? The what is it? The timing of this. Why is it being changed at this time? Um, but uh, okay. But so that was that. But then after she said that, do you feel that um, she understood or didn't understand what you were trying to explain? I I don't know. Did she say anything to you before the phone call that? asked you to give, provide an explanation for what you were trying to explain? No. Uh, I think she essentially wanted me to stay quiet. Well, during the call, right? During the call. Yeah, but before the call, did she express to you any words that um, asked you to explain what you meant? Um, I briefly mentioned that uh, on the parcel numbers, uh, you know, uh, that Carol needed further assistance in understanding why they were being split. You briefly explained that to who? Uh, the, the group that was on the phone call. To the city? To the city clerk's office. So you did speak a little bit? Very briefly. And why did you say Carol needs further explanation? Because I don't, I don't think she understood why these parcels were being split. So you told the people in the city that Carol didn't understand and needed a further explanation, correct? Yeah, and Carol asked as well. And so was it clear to you that at the start of that call, Carol didn't understand what you were trying to tell her? Um, I would assume so. Assume so based off? Not taking my word for it. Not taking your word for it, but yes. so she wanted to talk to someone else about the situation, yes. right? Yes? Yes. <laughs> oh, um, earlier you were asking me about why I resigned a little while There's ago. There's no question pending. Um, I just want to rephrase that, you know, because I said I was, I, I resigned because I was felt I was being pressured because I was doing something that was wrong. Uh -huh. you know, I, I felt it. Essentially, because it was wrong, because it's illegal. Yeah, so that's what, yeah. that's what in your mind you were thinking? Yeah. And why did you think in your mind that it was illegal? Because we're essentially withholding uh, public available information from the property owner on what they were to expect on their tax bills. But on what basis do you believe that was against the law? I think there are a lot of laws in the books that you probably aren't aware of. Were you aware of a law in the book that required such disclosure? Objection, argumentative. You can answer. Um, I wouldn't know because I'm not a lawyer, but essentially you're not providing uh, the most up-to-date information that should appear on a ballot for a property owner. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm wondering why you thought that was against the law, that's all. Objection, argumentative, asked and answered. You can answer again. Because the property owners are should be allowed to know what they are going to be paying out of their pocket on these for their property taxes. Right. So if you were making laws, that would be a law you would make because that should happen. But why would you think that was against the law in the society we live in? Objection. Argumentative. Asked I'm, and answered. You can I'm answer being, one more time. Because I'm being asked to withhold it. 
and therefore you thought it was illegal. Yes. Anything else you want to add or, or talk about after talking to your lawyer about different information about what you've testified to? Objection argumentative. Don't answer that question. Is there anything else you have to say about the basis for your belief that it was illegal to withhold this information? No. All right. Um, also attorney-client privilege with respect to the previous question. Okay, let's mark this as eight. Exhibit 8 is an email from Dennis Rader to Suzanne Hawley and Rick Scott dated July 5, 2017. And it says, Hello Suzanne, I'm back in the office. Regarding the parcels that have split, as per our phone conversation, when the parcel changes were first discovered, we have submitted the original parcels to the county. If those parcels have been superseded by the new parcels by the county, they will send us a parcel change report and the new calculations can be dealt with at that time. Hopefully I've answered your questions regarding this topic. Um, do, you, um, do, 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 you, um, do you see that yeah. email? Um, so a couple questions. One is um, he's referring to um, as per our phone conversation when the parcel changes were first discovered. Um, do you believe that refers to the conversation that you and Carol had with Dennis and, and, and the people in his office? Objection, lack of foundation, lack of personal knowledge calls for speculation. You can answer. I suspect so. Because that was when it was first discovered, right? Objection. Same objection. Right. Okay. First discovered yes. by whom? Um, and then it says, we have submitted the original parcels to the county. Do you, um, do you know whether or not... Um, the city, in fact, submitted the old parcels, parcel numbers to the county. Do you know whether or not that happened? I do not know. And then Dennis continues by saying, if those parcels have been superseded by the new parcels by the county, they will send us a parcel change report, and the new calculations can be dealt with at that time. Um, do you agree with his assessment that if the old parcels are um, have been superseded by county records in, in, in a, um, that, that they're actually superseded by new parcels, that if that happens, that the county will send parcel change reports? Objection, confusing, lack of personal knowledge, lack of foundation. You can answer. Yes, because the changes had taken place already. Right, and so in that, in that event, you agree with Dennis that a parcel um, change report would be sent, correct? Yes. And uh, as Dennis says, the new calculations can be dealt with at that time. Do you agree with that? They would have to in order for the bid to get paid. Um, you say um, in your complaint that... Um, you say in your complaint that um, after the call, um, Carol chastised you. Do you um? Did that happen? Uh, essentially, yes. You say essentially. What do you mean? Um, the constant, the badgering. And so far, sorry to interrupt. So far, I haven't heard what I consider a whole lot of badgering. Can you tell me what you meant by badgering? No, don't answer that question. Rephrase it in a non-argumentative way and allow him to finish his answer. Well, I don't, are you instructing him not to I'm answer based him off not to an answer. argumentative question? Correct. That's an argumentative objection. Um, That's why I said argumentative. What's your question? It's an argumentative objection, I said. Um, so my question is, is how did Carol chastise you? The constant 
of multiple times of reminding me that let's keep this matter a bit quiet. All right, we talked about that. Anything yes. else? That's essentially it. So on three occasions telling you not to discuss this um, with other people, that was chastising you? Correct? Yes, as, as the manner it was being uh, handled. And when you say manner, you mean the way she said it? The, the, the loud tone of um, these requests. You say in your complaint, um, part of your job was to provide the city attorney with estimates of the assessment for each parcel. Is that a typo? It's not the city attorney, right? It's the city clerk? City clerk's office. Okay. Um, you also um, say in, um, in, your, in your complaint that, that Carol convinced the city attorney, again, typo, to use the old, incorrect, outdated information in the notice and ballot. Um, but we've talked about the call and it's not your testimony that she convinced the city attorney, is it? Or swayed? Yeah. Well, how? how did, what did she say to sway the city attorney? City uh, clerk. Sorry, city clerk. The the, mat, the matter of the suggestion of uh, delaying the presentation of the most updated information that has already been I made a public. What did she say during the call to sway the city clerk as to withholding the information? I do not remember off the exact words. Do you remember any words that she said, <clears throat> exact or not, general or specific? The, the, at, she basically, I was asking Miranda if it was possible to delay the um, presentation, addition of these new parcels till after the ballot process. So Carol asked, if it's possible to delay this information? Yes. And that is how you believe she swayed or convinced the, the city clerk to, to withhold it? Yes. Any other ways that she convinced or swayed them? No, not that I know of. Now, you also say in your complaint that, um, that the, the resolution of the call or, or, or the direction you received after the call, quote, would have required you to provide incorrect information to the city clerk in violation of the notice and ballot requirements of the statute. Um, did you, you had already provided all information, correct? No, I have clerk? not. It was still a work in progress. So, but, um, so, so at that moment, if you had not resigned, you would have submitted the old information on the, uh, on, on the parcels? No, I would not have, uh, per the direction from Carol. Yeah, but I'm saying is that, um, is that had you already provided the database and, and you were trying to update it, or had you not provided the information yet and you were going to after the call? Objection has to answer it. You can answer it. If the, the city clerk and Carol um, did not come to the conclusion that they were going to delay this information, I would have routinely submitted the updated information. Yeah, but after you received the instructions from Carol and the city as to what to do, was it to do nothing and let them use the old information or was it to supply the old information? I, I would just let the current, I was planning on just let the current information go because I was directed so by Carol. Right, so it's not true that you would have been required to provide incorrect information to the, to the city clerk, right? Objection, the state's prior testimony. You can answer. You had already provided the information. I'm just trying to say you, they weren't asking you to provide new information, right? Right. They were, just, they were just telling you not to provide updated information, correct? Correct. They were going to continue with the existing data.
Do you recall slamming your notebook on the ta on, onto a table at the time that yeah, at the staff meeting or around the time you resigned? I, I tossed it on the table when I resigned, yes. You believe you gently tossed it or you slammed it? I tossed it. Gently or firmly? It was just a toss. Okay, let's mark this as Exhibit 9. Exhibit 9 is a statement signed by electronically by Brian K. Rabowin. Do you know who that is? Uh, Vice President of Operations. And so he worked with you at DCBIT? Yes. And, um, and it says in the statement, on April 18 at approximately 10.20 a.m., I was sitting in the conference room waiting for the director's meeting to commence. Carol Schatz walked in and a few steps behind her Herman Pang walked in in a very upset manner. Would you agree that you walked in to the director's meeting very upset, visibly? I guess. Do you guess or you believe that to be true? Yes. Carol sat down and Herman came over and slammed his notebook down on Carol's paperwork, just missing Carol's hand. Herman then yelled, I quit. Is that true? And I'll, I'll break that up. Is it true that you slammed your notebook down on Carol's paperwork? I do not recall that. But when you say you tossed it, what, did you toss it on her paperwork? It's possible. I was essentially throwing in the towel after uh, being told once again by Carol, do not be discussing this this meeting. Yeah, but um, I'm just trying to focus on the location of the toss. Was it tossed towards her paperwork or was it tossed in a different direction? It was toward the center of the table. Where her paperwork was nearby there? Oh, I don't, don't remember. Okay. Um, do you know if it was near her hand? I do not remember. Is that when you yelled, I quit? Yes, shortly after I tossed my notebook on the table. Do you believe you yelled it? It may be a, a louder th than my normal speaking tone, yes. Yeah. Um, then it says, he exited the conference room. And I, being Brian, immediately exited the conference room to stay with him as I am responsible for the security and the safety of the employees. Um, is it true that Brian is responsible for the safety and security of the employees? Objection, lack of personal knowledge, lack of foundation. I do not know. Um, did you say it has been building up for quite some time? No. You didn't say that? No. Did you say anything to Brian? That, that moment? I, as he said to him, I, I was just trying to do what I was being told to by the city clerk, and it's all routine, and I was just doing my job. Um, did, um, so you said that to Brian? Yes. And did Brian respond? to that comment? No. And then later down the paragraph it says, on your way out, y you hugged Lena and Sean. So Lena we already talked about, right? Yes. That's someone you spoke about this lawsuit to, right? Yes. Who's Sean? Uh, Sean used to be Carol's assistant and now is on the Central City Association side as um, the assistant over there. Have you spoken to Sean about this lawsuit? Either No. Either before you filed or after you filed? No, I haven't spoken to her since. Are you currently working? Yes. What's your job? 
um, project manager for a radio company. And when did you get that job? When did you start? Uh, beginning of July. Okay. Um, and July what? Beginning uh, July 1, like that? July 1. Okay, so it's a new job? Yes. And, uh, and so, and you, so you're only out of work for, um, for not very long, correct? Objection. Argumentative. Vague and ambiguous. Uh, depends what's long. Mm -hmm. um, did you immediately start looking for work? Yes. I mean, like, the first day after? Yes. And, um, and did you go on any interviews before um, this job? No. This was the first job you had an interview for? Yes. And um, how long did it take you to get this job from when you first applied? Um, three weeks. And how much are you earning at this job? Um, 70000 And how much were you earning at DC Bid? Um, just under a hundred. Can you be more specific? Um, I think it's um, ninety-five. And seventy exactly at this new job. Yes. Do you have any opportunity for bonus at your new job? No. Any um, bonuses? Sorry, I strike that. Any um, any profit sharing or any uh, any other benefits? No. Uh, how about health insurance? Uh, yes. Did you have health insurance at DC Bid? Yes. Did you uh, did you have any references to get that job, that new job? No. You didn't list any. Did not re did not ask for them. They didn't ask for them, and you didn't volunteer any. No. What was the first um, step you made to look for new work after your resignation? Um, a lot of online searching. But when did you do that? Uh, shortly after I was out of work. What shortly after? Uh, the next couple of days. Next couple of days? Yeah. And what kinds of jobs did you look for? Um, uh, IT, field service, um, electronics. Your complaint says that, um, well, let me just ask you, are you, have you suffered any emotional distress as the result of your employment at DC Bid? Uh, I, yes, I, I suppose so. Um, you know, I'd be depressed. Uh, so you uh, say maybe depressed? What did you say exactly? I, I'd be depressed. Uh, you know, after spending all these years working for a company and uh, you know, trying to do everything for them, um, and to, to leave this way. To leave this way, meaning that causes you depression right now? Uh, yes. You know, it's like uh, the hardship and the stress. Do you believe that you're... Um do you believe that you're clinically depressed? Objection calls for an expert opinion. I, would, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Have you seen any physician to treat your, your emotional distress or depression? No, since I don't have insurance. But you just got some, right? It just started at the beginning of this month. So are you excited that you now have an outlet to go talk about your um, or seek treatment for your emotional distress? Um, if I could find time, uh, the new job, uh, it's taxing on my hours. What about your hours? Uh, it's, it involves a lot of my time and hours at work. 
Okay, so would you agree, though, that you're not too distressed or depressed to work? Oh, I have to work. Uh, so somebody has to bring home the, uh, the money to pay the bills. Yeah, I understand, but do you agree that you're not too depressed or distressed to work? Um, I'm making do. You're making do. Do you feel like you're on, does it, does it, does it difficult for you to work because of your emotional distress? Uh, yes, um, as part of the reduction in pay, uh, yes. Yeah, so is that one of the reasons that you're depressed or, or distressed Stress. because of your uh, reduction in pay? Yes. Any other reason? Just to make, men, uh, make ends meet, to, to pay these bills. Um, can you um, be any more specific about, um, about your emotional distress? Can you describe exactly what, what's happened to you? Um, I have one child in college and the second one on his way. And I um, felt terrible with the second one. He was um, to go to a four-year college. And he, after learning that I resigned, um, he decided not to. And he is now going to a junior college. Yeah, so, so but how's that? Is that describe your emotional distress? And not, not, oh, that not makes like me feel terrible. That um, I'm now, uh, my, my son feels that I can't um, support him. Because you're making 70000 now instead of 95000 Yes. Do you have any um, anxiety since uh, your, your resignation? Uh, I suppose so. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I'm not a psychiatrist, so I'm not a doctor. But you know, I'm not feeling great because of this whole situation. You're not feeling great. Um, have you ever um, been um, suffered from emotional distress before? No. This is the first time you suffered emotional distress? Yeah. Have you ever been without a job before? Yes, but I was uh, quickly, I was able to obtain a new job. Uh, quicker than this? Yes. How, what, what was uh, the last break in employment that caused you emotional distress? Um, the previous um, the, uh, breaks, uh, they were uh, all voluntarily and the new job was so wait they were overlapping. They were overlapping? Yeah. There is nothing, you're saying there's nothing in your past that um, may have been a contributing cause towards emotional distress? Not that I'm aware of. And if you find time from this current job, are you going to look for a doctor to treat your emotional distress? I hope I can. You hope you can? Why, why wouldn't you be able to? With the current demands of the present job, it's hard to find time to break away. Yeah, I'm saying if you do find time, will you, will you find a doctor to treat your emotional distress? Uh, yes. You, you, you promise? Is that like a commitment you're making? No, don't answer that question. He's not promising you anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying are you promising me. I'm saying are you committing, whether to yourself or your attorney maybe? No, to, uh, don't answer that question. I don't know. Don't answer that question. My question is have you um, made a commitment to anyone besides your lawyer to go see a, a doctor to treat your emotional distress? No. You don't feel it's it's that bad? Objection argumentative. This state's prior testimony, you can answer. I've answered that one earlier. Which is what? It is that bad or it's not that bad? Same that I don't, I, at the present time, I do not have time due to the job to break away to go see a doctor. And until very recently, I just have started getting insurance. 
Um, wh wh when did you begin experiencing emotional distress? Uh, the, the day I resigned. Okay, and then um, has it gotten better? Did it get better when you find a new job? It, a, a little bit. A little bit? I mean, it's going from zero well, income to $70,000. That should be... Yeah. Objection argumentative. Yeah, so it was, it's, it's, it, did it get a lot better? No, still having a hard time making ends meet. Are you taking any medication for your emotional distress? No, because I have not seen a doctor yet. Do you feel you need medication? Objection. Lack of personal knowledge calls for an expert opinion. You can answer. I do not know. Can you describe how um, your emotional stress is uh, impacting your life? Objection. Asked and answered. You can answer again. Um. It's more along the lines of stress. And uh, not allowing my wife for children to be purchasing the items that they would normally purchase uh, during the course of their day-to-day -day activities. Have you ever seen a... Um Psychiatrist before for anything? No. Have you ever been divorced? No. Okay, let's um, take a break. Okay. This marks the end. Media number eight, the time is 4.05 p.m. We're off the record. This marks the beginning of media number nine. The time is 4.18 p.m. We're on the record. Okay, I just have a few more questions. <clears throat> Do you know who Ryan Aubrey is? No. Um, he's the property owner's representative at the Greenland property. Does that sound familiar? Objection. Seems facts not in evidence. Who he is. Council testifying. Okay. Um, and um, when you did you at any time try to um, think about or reach out to a, an owner's representative at the Greenland Project? No, I do not feel it was required. The information was available that I needed on the assessor site. But wasn't the information available on the assessor site regarding the Bonaventure property? It was as well. So why did you reach out to the, that owner but not the Greenland owner? At the recommendation of Suzanne Holly. Did Suzanne recommend that you reach out to the, the representative of the Greenland project? I do not remember. Would you have reached out to the representative of the Greenland Project if she had asked you to? Objection calls for a hypothetical. You've got to let me finish my objection, Mr. P. Calls for a hypothetical, calls for speculation. You can answer. What was the answer? Um, if the information was available to me. What, the contact information? Yeah. If she had told you who to contact? Yeah. Did you ever ask her who you could contact over there? No. Um, does it surprise you that no one objected when the old information on the parcel numbers went out to the owners of the Greenland and uh, Bonaventure properties? Objection. I don't uh, know. Mr. Payne. Objection. It seems facts not in evidence. Argumentative. You can answer. And so what was the answer? I don't know. You don't know if it surprises you? I don't know if the information went out. What information went out to them? But I'm saying, it, would it surprise you to learn that the old information did go out and no one objected. Same objections. Yes, uh, a lot of times the owners do not know what's happening with their own properties. 
So yes, it surprises you, or yes, it doesn't surprise you? Uh, yes, it does not surprise me. It would not surprise me. So someone is, um, so the, the Greenland project, again, we said was one of the bigger projects downtown? Yeah. And um, the property owners of that parcel don't really know what's going on? Objection, lack of personal knowledge, lack of foundation. You can answer. I do not, I would not know whether they would have known that these parcels have gone online. No, you wouldn't, or are you saying that you didn't know? You're saying that you didn't know that, um, wouldn't they object because, why would a property owner object to a ballot with bold parcel information on it? Objection, lack of personal knowledge, lack of foundation, calls for speculation. You can answer. I do not know. You don't know of any reasons why a property owner would object? Other than the property owner would like to see the most current information on their property. And so a property owner like Peter Zen, who's looking at a ballot that has the wrong property information, he certainly had the opportunity to object, didn't he? I suppose so. Um, knowing Peter Zen, he is very in tune with his property, and um, I suspect he would make a mention of it. And are you aware that Peter Zen signed his ballot? I uh, was not, no, I did not know. Does it surprise you that he signed his ballot and didn't object to the old information on the parcel, on the ballot? That would be surprising to me. Because he's in tune to his property and would know that's incorrect, right? Yes, especially after the emails. Looking um, back at, I think it's um, exhibit, is that eight or seven? This is the um, Dennis Rader email to Suzanne Holly dated July 5, 2017. Do you have that in front of you? Yes. One moment, please. Which email is it then? It's the Rader to Holly, July 5, 2017, Exhibit 8. Exhibit 8? Yes. Okay. Okay, I want to focus in on the third sentence starting, if those parcels have been superseded by the new parcels by the county. Do you see that? Yes. So my question is, um, this is Dennis saying that, questioning whether the parcels, the old parcels have been superseded by the old parcels. And um, my question to you is, is um, why would, if you know, why would Dennis question that if, as you say, there was already publicly available? Objection, argumentative. I do uh, not know. One moment, Mr. Peng, please. Argumentative assumes facts not in evidence. Uh, counsel testifying, you can answer. I do not know. Um, so, but you would agree this is the city, this email is, is the city is Dennis Rader from the city um, leaving open the possibility that the county has not yet reflected the new parcel information? Objection, argumentative, lack of foundation. You, you haven't even asked him if he read, has seen this email before. I don't have to. You know, he read, I read it to him. You asked him if this was an email from Dennis Rader. He has no idea where it is. I didn't ask him if it was an email. You, anyway, you let did, us... You did, in fact. But what's your, what's your question? I asked that. All right, I'll ask it again. Would you agree that this email is the city, Dennis Rader from the city, leaving open the possibility that the county does not have a record of these new parcels? Objection, lack of foundation, lack of authentication of the document, lack of personal knowledge. You can answer. I do not know why Dennis phrased it this way, since he himself informed me from seeing the changes on the county's database. 
Well, this may get back to the issue of the county recorder versus the county assessor. The county assessor. Yeah, right. So, um, okay, and then it says they will send us a parcel change report and the new calculations can be dealt with at that time. And, um, and that, as I think you testified previously, this is in line, this is consistent with your understanding that changes could be made subsequent to the initial ballots going out, correct? This sounds like it's being phrased um, in order for the bid to receive payment for these new parcels that these changes will have to be made. Okay. All right, uh, no further questions. Okay. Uh, can we enter into a stipulation? No. No? no. Okay. Off the record. This marks the end of meeting number nine. The time is 4.27 p.m. We're off the record. We have a lot more witnesses. This concludes meeting number 10 and the videotape deposition of Herman Payne. We're going off the video record on July 11, 2017 at 4.28 p.m.